right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our, our May Planning Commission meeting. Um, I'm going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Mr. Covert's going to lead us in the interview. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the recording which one nation, God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you tonight asking for your guidance as we make decisions for our city. We ask that your hand be on our mayor and their staff. Lord, we ask you to be with the president and our government as well, Lord, as well as all the armed forces. Lord, we ask you to be with the Colorado school tonight that's had the shooting, that you would be with those people and keep them in your arms. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all again for joining our May 7th, 2019 Planning <coughs> Commission meeting. I will call this meeting to order if we can do roll call. Gary Compton. Roy Covert. Here. James David. Here. Vivi Haney. Here. Shannon Mueller. Here. Peyton Parker. Here. Kevin Parsley. Here. Ben Peters. Dale Tyler. Here. Right. Uh, April minutes, any questions or comments? Motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Mrs. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Covert. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, we do have a couple of uh, tabled items, and which mean we will not hear them this evening. Uh, one of them is B19-21, Taldo Properties, LLC, 503 Old Missouri Road. And the other tabled item is a large-scale development, large-scale 19-10 WC and Associates, 167 East County Road, along with the, with the waiver of the detention requirements, W1901. So, um, and then, Final one is uh, large scale 19 12 Zamas Custom Cabinets, south side of County Line Road, west of Pontchartrain. That has been tabled per staffed. Um, so those will not be heard this evening. All right. First item we do have is L 19 09, the Creamery, west side of 40th Street, south of Elm Springs Road. It's also variance B19-20 for deviation of commercial design standards presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, after the last meeting, we, we went back, um, worked with staff, um, updated elevations and modified site plan to uh, conform with landscaping standards and the commercial design standards. Um, and I'll answer any questions. Okay. Staff comments? I can tell you we've, we, they did a really good job about going through it and working on it. I think we've addressed all the concerns that we had on that. The landscaping variance that you asked for, uh, the landscaping that was required has been moved to other locations on the property. So there's really not any landscaping missing. It's just been reallocated to different locations. Correct. On the yes. Aaron, is there anything I'm missing? Might as well stay up here for the next couple. <laughs> uh, the consultant, as you can see on the uh, on the site plan, uh, Austin, you change it back one. On the uh, site plan, asked to put a bench in between the turnaround there on the southeastern corner. Um, and normally, our commercial design standards would promote something of this nature. But with the foundation landscaping that usually has to be up against the building, this is a little bit of a modification. We think we get a good product with this and switching that. It allows the architect to design a little bit. It doesn't kind of restrict them on there, and we still get a good item. So we left the commercial design standard variance on there for that um, so you guys could see that. But that is really the only item that we felt was still remaining, and that's just because they wanted to change it up a little bit. So other than that, uh, staff feels like they've met the uh, commercial design standards pretty well. So. Any Don't questions? Leave. Any questions or comments from the audience? <coughs> to the commission. Is this on the variance then? Yeah, call we have a call for the vote for the, for the vote on the variance. Call for vote by Mrs. Haney. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Variance passes 8-0. And motion for large scale. Make a motion for large scale. By Mr. Covert. A second. 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 Second by Mr. Peters. 
David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. Large scale passes 8 0. Thank you. We appreciate you guys. I, I never like having something tabled to the next month, but there was a lot that needed to be worked on in this. So much better. I think we have the product. So. Yeah, so I appreciate it. Uh, next item on here Hickory Creek Investment B19 22, lot six of replats, Andrew Marks uh, SD, in conjunction with non large scale rollers, custom work. Um, Woodworks, west side of North Thompson, south side of Bulldog Claim. So there's a variance for deviation of commercial design standards as well. Yes, thank you. Um, Jason Apple again with ESI. So we went back, we removed the variances for the site, the site variances. Um, we modified some parking arrangements um, uh, so that we could keep that 60% number in front. And then we, we moved some around um, to the east side, um, added some landscaping in there. Um, so. Th the item on the variance request is for an architectural metal panel um, to be allowed. Um, we've modified the, the building to where the office kind of sits down a little bit so we don't have that 100 foot um, break in the roof line. Or we do have it now, we didn't before. Um, so we've kind of used some panels to break up the facade and uh, I'll answer your questions. Staff comments? Karen, you want to address the design standards on this one too? Um, as Jason stated before, um, they had that long run where they didn't have any break. We had over 100 foot, and that's where commercial design centers asked for a break of change, and they did. They dropped the front. So that's under 100 feet where we have that run. They added the awnings. Um, they did redesign the parking where no longer 60% of the parking, or it's right at 60% is what you're allowed. If you go over 60%, you have to ask for a variance on that. So they changed that to meet the guidelines on that. And uh, really, we're down to just the materials here. And a heavier gauge metal we have supported so that it doesn't do oil canning, but still allows some affordability in design and uh, uh, low maintenance activities. And you can make a good building that's not all. PMB uh, that has facade updates and everything. So that's kind of where they settled on that last variance for this. And we have used that metal paneling and other structures that we've approved in town. Yeah, a panel with the architectural ridge is acceptable. Uh, usually our ordinance says when it's over 50% of the building, that's where you're kind of deviating from the standard. So um, they do have that brick wainscoting around the bottom. and uh, But that was just the one that they were like, if there's one thing we would like to ask for the commission to give relief on, that would be it, was on the uh, architectural metal panel. So. Any questions or comments from the audience? Still commission. Call for the vote. Uh, call for the vote on the variance. Ms. Haney. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Variance is passed eight zero. Motion on large scale? Motion to oh, no, it's a non large scale. The staff comments? Sorry? It's a non large scale. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, I just put that on there so y'all would have a reference. Yeah, so you know what it is. They Remember said. when a commercial subdivision is approved, you can submit non large scale plans for each of those lots. You don't have to come back with a large scale. The only reason you have that is because it had a variance. So. so, any call for the vote or anything? Either yeah, or we don't need anything with that. We just need the variance, really. Thank you. Uh, next item, L18-29, Safekeeper Storage Phasing Plan, east side of Oak Grove Roads, north of Oak Grove Baptist Church, presented by DSI, DCI. Hi, I'm Leslie Tabor um, with DCI. Um, the owner uh, would like to propose building the um, office building and then building A. And that it's hard to see on this exhibit up here, but it's what's not shown in yellow. And you can kind of see what's in yellow on that exhibit. Um, utilities would just be stubbed out for the, you know, eastern two buildings. Um, that's all we've got at this point. So, but it also allows for the fire access to be built all the way. Yes, to absolutely. The, with the hammerhead, so that the fire yes, truck can still. Yes, we will absolutely maintain that. That's why that. it extends so far to the, to the east, yes. just to get that in there when they're building it all at one time. Instead of yes. Off. So, any other staff comments? Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Motion to approve. Subject to yeah, staff. call for the vote. They're asking for the phasing plan, and all we really need is a vote to accept. Call for the vote. 
Offer a vote by Mrs. Haney. Mueller. Yes. Barker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Passes 8-0. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next section is on rezoning R19-15 Chris <coughs> Brown 9150 West Miller Roads from A1 to an MF2 presented by Chris Brown. Hi there, I'm Chris Brown, just here for the rezoning. So that's all I'm asking for is a, the MF. I've talked with Ms. Patsy Christie, and this was under her recommendation to be able to go to this, this zoning, so. Okay, staff comments? The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates low density residential use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan. It's recommended for approval. Protect the positive aspects of neighborhood character throughout the city. Ensure adequate land allocation for residential purposes by providing lots of adequate size and encourage the development of a variety of housing types appropriate to the size and income of the housing households living and working in Springdale. An MF2 zone allows for single family dwellings townhomes and duplexes are the only uh, uses that are allowed at a density not to exceed four units per acre which is similar to an SF2 zone it does set a larger lot size for single family homes at an 80 foot frontage with 10,000 square feet and a duplex with a 90 foot frontage of 12,000 square feet anything else okay um, I suspect there's several that have comments on this and we'll welcome uh, any, any comments or questions that you do have, but if it does get repetitive on that, um, we'd appreciate it as far as some of those comments being brief in, in that whole piece on here. So I will open this up uh, to the audience if there's any questions or comments. I'll need you to come to the mic and state your name and address, please. Okay. Thank you. My name is Doug May. I live at 8961 Crest Lane in the uh, subdivision adjacent to the uh, uh, property that's being looked at for the uh, rezoning. Um, I've been, I am here on behalf of uh, Brent and Ann Guatney, who live at 9037 Spring Ridge Drive, which is the first house that, is, that adjoins the property. Um, coming up, coming up to Spring Ridge Drive entrance, and I've got a, a copy of the letter. I was just going to read a letter from them. Each one, each member of the planning commission was given a copy of the letter already. It was oh. emailed to me today. They already had. Okay. It, it will be submitted into the record. Okay. okay. All right. So, can I just maybe summarize a few things from it, Patsy? Thank you. Um, just a couple things from the letter that they are concerned. They've been in the neighborhood for two years, and. Obviously, their biggest concern is this property, that is not a good representation of the property today. I don't know how many, I mean, I would just ask the, the commission, how many have been by this property recently and have physically seen it? Yeah, not, not the whole commission has, but there are two large billboards on this property and this property has been about, probably about 80% clear cut. So all the trees are no longer there and there are two large billboards out, out front on an agricultural property. Um, and so that is a that is a big concern and that is a complaint that the the Guatneys have had from day one they have called the city to come out and look at it and nothing's been they say nothing's been done but when you look at that they have lights shining in their bedroom windows and have and have had to black out get blackout curtains in their house uh, and that is just one one of the homeowners I'll let the other homeowners speak for themselves but their concern is and it's a shared concern with just the um, willingness and openness and frankly the honesty from Mr. Brown about what his intentions are here uh, when this property was first started to be developed it was in the county Benton County not part of the city it was a hole in the city and he basically did everything under the radar if you will very secretive and wasn't very open and forthcoming with what he was his intentions were worth doing our concern is that that will continue that he my understanding is if it's agriculture, you can build a house there today, um, but that process will just continue. There are trees, he left, did leave some trees as a buffer, but who's to say he's not gonna tear down, cut down more of those trees and, and eliminate that total buffer so that all, all residents just get a, a nice sight line of billboards in your front yard. 
And then lastly, for me then, I would say that, uh, you know, I am not directly impacted by this. I don't adjoin the property, but I just look at it as a whole. And to me, it just doesn't pass the smell test, if you will, that is this really a good fit? It is not compatible with the adjacent properties. As you can see, there are farmland around it, large acreage farms and farmland in, in $400,000, $500,000 homes that adjoin it. I'm, I'm asking myself is who would live, build a house underneath a set of billboards and live there that's going to that's going to be compatible with the with the surrounding area so to me it doesn't even pass the the smell test that says this does this doesn't make sense it just doesn't make sense thank you thank you appreciate it any other questions or comments my name is jim cash uh we're right across the street from there in that uh, farmland and everything. I've got barn at the springs. I've tried to keep all my, I've y'all have given me a, a privilege of building a business out there. Uh, I've tried to keep it all natural as much as I can and keep it like it should be. Uh, now we've got billboards across the street and I understand they're wanting to build duplexes or something. I'm not exactly sure. We have a water problem there. We need uh, <coughs> probably a retention pond built somehow if they do build duplexes to offset that. Miller Road floods now, which was probably never flooded in the past. It floods in, pro in front of my entrance there from the new bypass is where I think this is coming from. So we've never had 112 flood in there before, but they will hold water and everything in that area. And I, I, that's all I've got to say. Thank you, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Good evening. My name is Pacho Vang. I'm living in the uh, Spring Ridge subdivision also. To me, I think that one of the criteria is that there's a um, drainage system coming down from the hill right directly into this uh, lot right here. That could be a concern. But to me, I would like to address that the purpose for uh, of uh, zoning law is to protect the value of a property and it encourage that property to be best used. And I don't see that this property going to be a best use for a multi home as proposed. And also the interest of rezoning, I believe, is to preserving the residential character of the neighborhood. And I don't see by putting a multi-family unit at this corner lot preserve the character of the property surrounding this property. As I stand tonight right here, I would ask to see if it is it vital to consider rezoning this property just to benefit someone, or is it really protect the characteristic of the surrounding property and the value of the people property? And I, was, I would like to um, summarize that as a council, or as a uh, member of this um, chamber. Please look at the character of the property around Springdale and how it would impact the people of this community by such that it will change the character of the land use, not only for this, but it may be for future property also. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. James Harrington, 8965 West Miller, and this is my wife, Nicole Harrington. Um, 
we're going to echo a couple of the comments that were already made and try to keep that extremely brief for you. Uh, basically, um, the uh, the ordinance that has to do with being able to rezone this does, like he was just saying, it's basically the harmony of, of everything. And every single property around there is $250,000, $300,000 houses. There's million-dollar houses um, around that entire, um, all the subdivision that's right there. Um, our house is a little bit farther east. Um, but... Uh, um, where where we're touching with that is that uh, there's no duplexes within about five miles. There's no billboards within about five miles from this entire section. So we realized that that the billboards was created uh, during that before the annexation and and that that was completely you know fine and whatever. But adding more of uh, adding more of this to that property is going to make this not be in harmony with everything else. Um, for those of you that haven't actually seen the property. Uh, we brought pictures of um, what it looks like currently um, because that representation of all those trees, um, like was said already, 80 or 90 percent of those trees are gone. Um, and uh, so we have all of that. Someone else mentioned the, uh, uh, the flooding of the area. Um, we brought pictures of all of that. That's just from the rain from yesterday. That's not, that's not consistent rain. This, this isn't uh, rain that's been happening for two weeks. This is literally one day worth of rain. Um, and that Miller's been floating like this for a long time. The, uh, uh, where that rain is going into is directly underneath those billboards. That's where the, uh, uh, that's where the flow is supposed to go. So that's going to directly impact, um, that entire area also. Um, so, um, we, uh, one of the, one of the other things that have been mentioned too, is we're not totally sure what duplexes are being built. Um, the, uh, we've heard five or six different conflicting stories about what is actually proposed um, here. Uh, all we've ever heard is duplexes, but we've had many different variations of that uh, to where it could be something nice or it could be your standard thousand square foot, uh, you know, duplex, which is going to be, you know, significantly different than what's surrounding the entire property. Um, so uh, you'll see with those pictures also that uh, that that basically that all of the billboards still um, that entire area still looks kind of like a construction site um, and our um, again it goes back to everything around there is not a construction site I mean the barn at the Springs he just mentioned that he tried to keep everything as natural as possible and um, all of this is uh, it's it's gravel and dirt and roots and old trees and it was basically just uh, cleared out and left um, I'm sure that there was some pickup that was done but it looks pretty ridiculous uh, in that regard. He's not spending a lot of time and or money to make that look nice again. Um, let's see, I apologize. I'm just going through a check checklist here real quick just to make sure we touch on everything. Um, so the other, uh, the last part of that, I guess, is basically that 112 is gonna be widened soon, which everybody knows about. Um, we know that they're uh, currently looking at exactly what sides of the road they're gonna be planning on uh, widening. Um, if, uh, if they widen the east side, which goes into this property, that's going to cut back on the amount of land that would be needed to, uh, to actually do the rezone. I know you guys have, have minimums, and we're under the impression that uh, if they end up widening east, then uh, he would be under those minimums, to not, be, not even be able to get the rezone if that ended up happening. Yeah, that was a question I was just, when you guys were walking out, I was leaning over talking to uh, Patsy about what, what is, as far as 112 widening and things like that, what is the... Well, right away. The planning committee or the RDOT is in the process of working through that project. We haven't seen any alignments. We have not seen any standard uh, right of ways that they're looking at. Some of it they're looking at as a boulevard with medians down it, but we don't have any plans for it yet, right. so I can't address that. Uh, when that happens, they'll come through like they do any other project and acquire the right of way that's needed in this location if they need some. So we contacted the State Highway Department about the surveying. They just started at Highway 412 and they're working their way north on 112 right now. They said in the next 30 days they will be close to this property um, and let us know what they will be doing. They said that they just started it, but that is another concern. I hate to rezone this and grandfather yet again something in on this property when we don't know what the future holds but it is public knowledge they are widening it and we do have an email that says that he is in the process of doing it he told me to contact him back in 30 days um so 
Um, also, we also wanted to state there are several neighbors that are here tonight that probably uh, won't have the chance to come up here and speak because I know we're trying to keep it brief. But I would just like for them to stand just to acknowledge how many people are here against, against this rezone. So if you are a neighbor to this property, can you please stand? And there's many neighbors that could not have been here tonight because of other circumstances, work, school activities, but they did sign something too saying that they are not in favor. And there's 28 individuals on this uh, on top of everybody who else stood, if you guys need to see those. Um, I think that's basically all we have. We appreciate your time. Great. Thank you so much. Um, is there any additional comments that are outside of what we've we have heard on, on this, okay? I'm Jim Cash. I am directly across the road from these signs. We're flooded out. My son gave you about the barn. His, if all the water comes behind, in front of my house, it comes off where he's fixing to build. And where are you, what plan do you guys have for our part of the area? Do you have low rent houses in mind? Or what is, what is, what, what is our main plan for us out in our part of the country? And they are widening. We have been surveying on 112, and they've surveyed it probably two or three times. I own directly <coughs> across the road from it. And I would like to see what kind of plan is, where are you going to put, where is he going to get off of? Is he going off Miller Road? Or where is he coming off 112? Because Miller Road does flood. And all this water from the school comes behind my neighbor and it all comes in my field. The septic, not the septic system, the sewer line that went across our piece of property, the head has, they've had to go back, and I can show you the concrete that they had to pour, and it was, on, it was flooded out and washed, it didn't wash it out, but you could see it. And I think with what the gentleman's trying to do is we're gonna have more water in our place, in the middle of my field, and it, and it has washed it out. And I would like for the state of Arkansas, I guess, owns the right of way all through there. I have a small swimming pool out by the <coughs> culvert where all this comes through. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. With, and you can see, I don't believe this is compatible with what we have out there and what the other folks on the hill have. You can see they were here, and I think we're well represented. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Uh, my name is Tommy Weaver. I live in, live in the Spring Ridge subdivision, 8012 Willowwood Court. First, I want to thank the members of the commission for their time of being here. Uh, appreciate y'all's efforts and concern for the community. I'm gonna take a little bit of a twist on what's been presented so far, a different light. And I wanna start with the mission statement that y'all have. I'm not gonna read it all, but it basically says is it promotes health, safety, welfare, prosperity, comfort, and convenience. So the question is, how does the rezoning promote those six ideas of your mission statement? And I challenge y'all to think about that before you vote this afternoon. One of the key words in all this is compatibility. That's existing together in harmony. And I think that's an important word as we, are, as we discuss this uh, petition. 
The next item is the comprehensive land use plan of 2010 that was updated in 2010. You know, it's a guide to preserve the community. That's certainly the, for sure. The goal of y'all's land use plan is to minimize situations in which development detracts from the enjoyment and value of the surrounding and nearby properties. That's the goal of the land use plan, as stated. One other item in the land use plan talks about multifamily housing. Multifamily housing should be developed at a density and scale that is, guess what, compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. Again, that comes right out of the land use plan. I'm going to kind of dispense with the, the history of the track since I was involved with it since the middle of October of last year. Uh, on the petition that Mr. Brown filled out, he stated there's no effect on the adjacent neighborhood. I'm going to let you all decide what the real answer to that statement he also states that there's a physical barrier that's between his property and our neighborhood. Trees? Well, apparently it's not doing very good about the light spillage problem because it's stated with Doug's letter that people are having to put out the blackout draperies for that. And then lastly in his petition, the property only is adjacent to two property owners. Well, it's really Ford and Mr. Smith and Mr. Cash, by definition of the planning department. Let's move to the density issue. Um, in my uh, time I spent with Patsy, she's been very gracious with her time with me. But what I can discern it did not take into consideration of the space that's occupied by the billboards, the footprint. It does not take into consideration of the path of the existing storm drainage. And it doesn't take into consideration the existing tree coverage. Now, Kevin, you're the chairman of the commission. One thing that you asked was a good question. I've been over the time, developed a pretty good relationship with Steve Lawrence. Steve Lawrence is the district engineer for district number nine, but covers uh, State Highway 112 all the way to Washington County line. I spoke to him again this morning, and he did state that there would be additional right of way taking as a result of the widening of 112. Now he did say in the same breath, he didn't know how much, but there definitely would be. He did indicate that probably the winter of this year, we would start having public hearings on our section. And at that time, there probably would be more information as far as the actual right of way taking. Again, I put that under the heading of density issue because that would affect, obviously, the density. It would affect the two point, uh, a little over the two acre track. Now, Nicole has already asked previously a show of the hands of the members of our commission who's been there, and I've noticed some have and some haven't. So, in finalizing my comments this afternoon, my recommendations, and I, again, I, and I should have said this, I represent the POA, is to deny the rezoning request or at best table it until there's more information about the right of way taking. Uh, certainly this, again, affects the potential density. And that's the thing is, all this is about is, hey, does he have the density? So that uh, concludes my <coughs> comments. Uh, I'm open for any questions. I'm not sure if I can answer them, but I can go find them, try to. So 
thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other comments that have not been addressed on, on this so far? My name is Marit Bourne. I live at 8936 Grace Lane. And um, I just want to say, as was pointed out, is the billboards went up literally under the radar. They were within a week. No one know, knew what was going on until they were suddenly there. Um, and what, something that I would like to ask Mr. Brown is maybe if he could just put time switches on, on the billboards because yeah, those that, lights are on. In regards to the billboards? Um, this is not. That is not part of what we're addressing here tonight. And, and I appreciate the concerns that you have in, on that whole piece. That was, whenever you have a property that's brought into the city, it's brought in as an A1. This mm -hmm. one in particular was brought in because that was already being done, it was brought in as a non-conforming use in, into the city. Um, um, so those are things that can probably work with the planning department or, or even um, uh, come talk to the city about those yeah. particular things of what potential options there are and even talk with the, uh, the current owner about what can be done with the lighting pieces of, of that. I completely understand your concerns, um, but I, I am needing to keep this uh, within the multifamily th change. I, I totally understand and that, that that's not really the case here. I, I just want to um, sort of point out that it maybe shows more light on the courtesy that Mr. Brown extends to our neighborhood. There's no courtesy involved, so I'm very suspicious as well as about the kind of housing that he plans. Thank I you. I appreciate your comments on that. Any other comments or questions? Brian? My name is Brian Powell. I live at 6163 Alley Francis Trail, and I'm also on City Council Ward 1. I represent these people out here. I appreciate all the phone calls. I appreciate all the notes and the comments. Mr. Weaver, thank you for your comments. Uh, Mr. Brown, uh, the billboards are very ugly. If the billboards uh, issue if that was the city of Springdale, I would have fought it tooth and nail before the billboards put and brought in. But this is not about the billboards. Uh, although we do have a master land use plan, and this fits in the master land use plan, it may not fit this particular area. So I just want to side with uh, the residents of Ward 1, and I agree with them uh, on this. I think that we might need to take a little bit deeper look uh, into this before we rezone it. Thank Thanks, Brian. You guys are going to have a cash overload tonight. I'm sorry. But uh, my name's Kim Cash, and uh, we own Barn at the Springs. We've been here a lot of times. You all have helped us a lot. The, the reason that, that I would like to say something just to add, uh, I called about the billboards when they were up. Of course, none of us knew that they were coming. They were they were snuck in like in Tebby, okay? And so we all know that. But um, I called to see what's gonna be on the billboards. You're right in front of my entrance. Uh, what, are we gonna, what are we going to expect? Are they gonna be nice? I was told you'll be proud of what's up there. It will represent and reflect what's in your neighborhood. Our entrance has Cupid's lingerie, two huge ones, right in my front door. That is really not representative of a million dollar home or a big business. So if that's the intent or someone saying what's maybe coming, I'm just a little suspect of what, um, what the quality of the home would be. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? It's to the commission. Question, uh, Patsy. Uh, will the billboards be part of the MFT? Yes. That's they are a non-conforming sign on that piece of property. They would continue to be a non-conforming sign if the property is rezoned to MF2. All we're talking about today is the rezoning of the piece of property. Right. And so it will be non-conforming on the MF2 if we... Right. It's non-conforming today. Right. But because I mean, an A1 zone doesn't allow them either. It would remain a non-conforming sign if it's rezoned to MF2 or SF2 or any other thing unless it went to a commercial zone. If it goes to a commercial zone, then, it, then it's not a non-conforming right. sign. Right. Right. I just have a problem with... I have a personal problem with the billboards 
being that close to what he could be residential? There's nothing, I mean, because it was approved before it came into the city, it, it is a non-conforming use, a non-conforming sign. To be careful with the terminology. <coughs> it's a non-conforming sign on that location at this time, yes. So is there a distance that they have to be from the sign? You know, like the, when they put in a tower, uh, an antenna, there's a distance. That becomes a building, a building, because I don't do the sign ordinance, I don't know if there's a, a distance from the. You need to come to the mic. The only provision in the building code with a, a duplex or a multifamily dwelling is, is, is a fire separation. That's only five feet. So it would have to be five feet away from any structure, sign being a structure. Is that five feet from the base or five feet from? You would assume a structure, usually you assume the, in, the entire structure. I mean, when we build a, a structure without walls, a, a tent, yeah. canopy, it's a wall with openings is basically what that is, continuous openings. But because also, by the same token, a duplex is not considered to be multifamily, correct? No, no. It's under, it it's under the residential code. It's under the residential code, the same as a single-family house, right? Th yeah, single-family okay. dwellings, duplexes, and townhouses right. are all under the code of residential code. And the MF4, MF2 is the same as SF, the single-family right. 2. I mean... It's the same density. It's four units per acre. It requires okay. a larger lot size in an MF2 for a single family house than what an SF2. Uh, larger frontage. Allows. Yeah. 80 foot of frontage, 10,000 square feet, as opposed to a SF2, which is 70 foot of frontage and 8,000 square feet. So it's a bigger lot requirement and, for and a single And how family. many acres is that piece? 2.25. 2 yeah. So if, if we approve it, and they put the buildings on there. They have to meet all of the lot sizes, all the setback requirements. Okay. They'll have to deal with drainage. They'll have to do street improvements. All of those things that are standardly done with development. Right now, all we're talking about. And, and that includes taking care of drainage. Right. And right. And if the if the if they come in and take part of their side of the street, are they limited by what's left if they haven't built yet? Well, they still have to meet the, the lot sizes, the minimum requirements for a lot size to build there. Okay, so yeah. so if we change the zoning and then they take half the property, they can only build based on how many acres is left? Whatever will, the lot sizes will allow it to, be, to meet the minimum square footage for each structure is built, yes. And they, can, would they be able to ask for a variance to that or is that? They can always ask for a variance. And so like to the point if we, if it, does get rezoned all that will have to come back right what we're determining tonight is, is the highest and best use of this piece of property low density residential development in this case low de density development would be four units per acre the difference being they would be allowed to do single family <coughs> duplexes and townhomes which in an sf2 it's only single family that's the difference but it's the same density and it's a larger lot size But even with those side setbacks, front setbacks is based off of, it wouldn't be based off of the base of the signs. It would be based off of, if I, if I hung a, a string from the top of that, would the side setbacks be applied based off of the billboard sign itself well, or the base? There's a difference between the side setback that's required by the zoning classification and the setbacks that are required because of the fire code because it just said there would be a five foot separation from the edge of the sign to meet the fire code. But the zoning sets it as from the property lines, not where the, and it's from the overhang. We always, it's always the overhang too. What's the requirements for access? Um... Well, they would have to get permits from the highway department to put driveways on 112. They have to get uh, street cut permits from the uh, Public Works Department for Miller Road. Given that this area is being evaluated as far as the right of way, would they be willing to grant those, I wonder, at this point? Well, not knowing how they're going to lay it out. And, and remember, when they come and ask for a rezoning, they don't have to present it with <coughs> any plan of how they're going to lay it out. <coughs> That's something we would get to when we got to a development plan or permits for single family homes. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, the, uh, leave it if you want to. Um, James Harrington, again, um, 
the we were talking about harmony with the actual property um, even if the billboards weren't on the property placing a house that is remotely the same size as anything in the entire neighborhood um, all of the surrounding houses it would be too small to go with harmony it would not fit um, so if we're talking about multi-family or even more than one structure it's not gonna it, it won't even look correct um, even remotely close we can't dictate the size else. of okay. the let, house let me address right. that we do not have design standards for single-family homes or duplexes nor do we have the ability to do that after the last legislative session our minimum requirements for house sizes is 24 feet and it that's the only thing that we can regulate okay and my only last thing um, my question is is a question how can uh, I realize that the signs are non-conforming signs um, considered a business um, how can this be the same area with a business and a residential in the same area okay, a billboards not considered to be a business it is a sign okay that's thank you I'll say planner based on what I measure on this lot those two signs and the back along the uh, back of that lot which is parallel to uh, highway 112 it has a ditch over there for the drainage and along the front it has a uh, culvert that crossed both Miller and 112 into the other side which is the west side of 112 and it also has um, a little ditch along Miller Road, which is the north side of Miller Road. And being a narrow lot all the way to the end, the acreage at the back wouldn't even affect anything. Can't even build anything on the back there. As a civil engineer, I don't think that you can put a building within the inside of those two signs, those two mega signs right there. So I would like to voice that. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions from the commission on this? Betsy, so where's, the, uh, <coughs> where's the nearest multifamily or MF zoning to this property? Do, is There's there not anything area? in the area, no. Keep in mind, though, again, that duplexes are not considered to be multifamily. I didn't ask about duplexes. I asked about multifamily zoning. There's not any. MF zoning. I just asked two questions. My name is Frida Goodman. I live at 8825 Crest Lane in Spring Ridge subdivision. Did I understand you correctly to say that the lot is, the property is 2.25 acres and that, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And that on one acre, eight units, four units could be built? Could be by ordinance that allows four units. That doesn't mean he has to be able to put them on there. And, and then the that means the total of eight units could actually be put it's on possible, that property. Yes. It's possible. Okay. I just want people to hear that. Duplexes, townhomes, single family. Yeah. Right. And then the other question is, I know we're, we're tired of hearing about the billboards, but how can homes go in on the same property or how can the signs remain on the same property if this is rezoned as a home is i don't understand yeah that. it was it was accepted in right from the i know city it was grandfathered in yeah from an, a non-conforming perspective on it right i know that yeah. but so that that just doesn't make sense to me that you can rezone that area even though it was grandfathered in that's just that doesn't make much sense to me to build a house that close to those huge billboards. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Well, I actually want to share real quick, really quick, and I think it may be worthwhile. You get it. Stand up to the yeah. mic where we can hear you. So, I bought this property about seven months ago or eight months ago. I have a vision. Um, actually, Steve Hess, who is the developer of the neighborhood above, left this to, this piece of property out so that he could sell it as a commercial piece of property. That is not my intentions whatsoever to put any commercial stuff, even though that's what it was potentially could be. There's other commercial on 112. I actually lived in, in, in this neighborhood previously. So I lived there for five years next to some of these neighbors right here. So I do understand. I've been there in this neighborhood. I was worried about that piece of property Make when, sure you I, continue speaking when I was mic. there. The reason the billboards are there actually is a bigger vision, and I think it would be worthwhile for you guys to hear this. So the billboards are part of the overall 
picture that I have in my mind. This is called 112 Signs of Good. There is a problem in Northwest Arkansas with affordable housing that's nice for particularly for single moms or people that are in a bad situation that can't get out. This was designed that the rents from the billboards will actually subsidize the housing for moms that are in trouble and cannot get out of a house if there's potential domestic violence. In no way are we going to make it an unsafe or unclean place. This needs to be somewhere they're proud. We want there to be a garden. We want there to be houses. We want them to have the ability to move out or move in and keep them nice. This is not something that's just a low rent district. People know I'm not a low rent person. I've kept my house up for very nice in the neighborhood when I was there for five years. This is about a vision to take care of women in Northwest Arkansas that have trouble and can't leave a bad situation that they're in. If you think your neighborhood and your property value is worth more than a woman or a family with kids that needs out, you let me know and come say that. I will absolutely help you out in some other way. But this is what this is about. This is a low density thing. You can't fit that many units on this. It may be single houses, it may be duplexes, it may be townhouses. But it's more than just your property value. And if you think that's right, I have, it's, it's your own problem and you can deal with that. I think this is a great use. There's a lot of commercial use on 112. We're not putting a gas station. We're not putting other buildings and stuff like that. There's a very specific purpose. The signs are there to support this. It was all done correctly by the highway code, by the county code. Everything was done with very much in high quality, and that's what will happen as well whenever we build whatever we build on it. I don't even know that we're going to build, but I want to have the option to make that vision come true. So I think it's worth sharing that with everybody here that they can hear the whole picture of that. I appreciate it. Any other questions from the commission on this whole piece? Well, let me, let me get the commission. And um, if it's a comment that is outside of everything that we've heard I do out of respect I do have to keep this pretty brief on on it uh, going forward on here but let me because I did bring it to the Commission let me bring it to them make sure that there wasn't any additional questions or comments yeah I, my you know my only comment would be in addition I, I, I certainly understand the concern about property values uh, but there's also I believe a, an overlooked tenant in terms of making sure that we have diversified and affordable housing um, everywhere that all folks can participate in and, and be in good neighborhoods and so on and so forth. But I do also say um, that, yeah, there's a, you know, is a concern about how you'll get all of this on this, on this land. So I understand um, and I appreciate everyone coming out and, and, and saying what's on their mind and being concerned about their neighborhoods. And we do have a charge to make sure we ensure appropriate economic development for our community. But I also think we have to, we have to remember those who are not here right now who do want to live in good, safe neighborhoods and go to good schools and, and have that opportunity to develop themselves economically. But I do think that there are some serious questions about how all this will come together. And uh, that's all I want to say. Okay. Yeah. I, go I ahead, have one Shane. question. Um, how, where, how far back from the highway are the signs? Absolutely. So there is already a state highway right away on the property, as well as the new city sewer line that went in easement as well. So it's about 50 to 75 feet before the edge of the front of the billboard. So not the pole, but the edge of the actual frontage of it. So we went beyond the ask, beyond where it was at, so it'd be set back, and we knew there could be potential. Although I talked to the city or the uh, highway department just yesterday, and they said they're going to start with the 412 bypass. They are not, or the 612 bypass. They will not be probably coming down for the next eight to ten years, coming down 112 and making it win, widening it. They may start at the other end and work on that Tawny Town bypass first. I mean, I know you're not really necessarily, maybe you don't have all this figured out, but how do you plan to get the units on there with the bill? Have you put any thought into that? Well, I mean, obviously we work with an engineering department because it's there is some configuring. I may just put one single house on, that may be all we get out of it, and that's fine. I just want to have the ability to put what we can to serve as many people as we can. And that's what it'd be. It'd be the ability to help. I mean, so it may be one, it may be two houses, it could be a duplex, it could be a townhome or a couple of townhomes. So we just want the ability to ask for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one last comment and then I'm gonna put closure to this and we're gonna um, uh, probably have a call for the votes here. I appreciate your interest in 
Can, can you make sure you speak into the mic Certainly. and you state you. your name and address, please? I appreciate his interest in, in women and mm -hmm. forwarding can, them and helping them. Sorry, can you state your name well, and address, please? I'm sorry, Danielle Walkwist. I live on Rusty Blackhawk. I can see the lights from, the, from the, my house. I, however, am a single parent. I would feel very ill at ease and very uncomfortable and almost scared to the point uh, that I would have to, to know that there would be um, this type of housing below my house. Um, I have a daughter that lives with me. I, it, it very much concerns me. I'm very concerned for my safety and for my daughter's safety. So, Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Last comment that I have, and then we'll just do a call for the vote on, on this whole piece. Um, there's a lot of unknowns in this. Um, I don't know what the rush to get through with all of this is. Um, you've stated what you, your intentions are, um, but there's a lot of unknowns. Um, Patsy knows my opinion as far as the Northwest Corridor or Springdale. We do have a master land use plan, um, but we've done things as far as the, the city, as far as planning things out from the ballpark district to the downtown um, areas. Um, we have a beautiful park that's uh, is getting ready to go into construction as far as Shaw Park and, and uh, part of the Northwest Corridor, something that we're very proud of. Um, there's a very uh, great development that is uh, already getting started with it within that space as well. We really need to make sure that we continue to think through what is the proper um, land use as far as these areas. I realize as far as from the master land use plan that this is in, in keeping with uh, what's planned for this area, but commercial or residential, I'm not so sure as far as that that shouldn't be commercial at some point in time. <coughs> A lot of it's going to be dictated as far as how the, the 112 plans kind of go through here. There's been other areas in the city that, uh, for example, the 612 Future State as far as east going just off of uh, I-49. Um, there are subdivisions similar to this that are going to be dramatically impacted from, from how that is cutting through and so forth. So um, we can vote on this tonight. or you can look at uh, potentially as far as coming back at a future date on this whole piece. And the reason why I'm bringing this up to you is, is that I think you're going to run into a lot of challenges um, because of the right of ways that you do have. Uh, realize too that if you do up to eight units, you will have sidewalk requirements through here. It doesn't matter if there's not sidewalks anywhere else. Uh, it's going to be a big challenge as far as getting waivers associated with that. No intentions and, of doing that. <laughs> the side setbacks, front setbacks, when the fire department, ha when you have a plan that's put in place, having a sign like that is going to be a big challenge in, in that whole piece. So, I don't, again, I don't know if how quickly you're wanting to move on these uh, particular things, but you might want to think about letting some certain things come into play as far as if it's 30 days, 45 days, as far as what 112 comes back on here, um, I'm a little bit confused as far as some of the right-of-way pieces. I realize what you're saying as far as right-of-way today, but I also realize on the opposite side of the road that there has been major utilities that have been put in on both sides of that road there that's going to be a big challenge as far as just doing that. Would they rip that out again, or would they take that into consideration as far as where there's not any building? The units would not be anywhere close to the road. They're all going to be toward the back of the property I, before the I, ridge line. So I understand, but that's affected. going to really depend on an engineering plan. It's going to be t depending as far as flooding and how you can deal with the water situations and things like that. Is that required normally for a single family home? Well, you're going to have to deal with the drainage. And you You'll have, have to deal with your own drainage path. of your property, okay. yes. And the access point, how you access it and that kind of stuff. If it's zone day one, you can go build two single family houses out there today without having to rezone it. Okay. But you, as the property owner, have the right to have your rezoning request voted upon tonight. Yeah. Or you can is there any options on that whole piece? Is there anything that would be a reason that it can't be, I mean, rezoned? I mean, based on the recommendations that well, I've received. Planning I'm, Commission has to vote. Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. Okay. I'm trying to see. There was. And depending on their recommendation, it goes to the City Council right. for them to actually consider it as well. Right. If it is denied here, you have the right to appeal that decision to the City Council. Right. But you have the right to have it voted on tonight if you want it. We'll go ahead and vote on it. I think it's worthwhile. So I just had one comment is that to me when I look at this that 
if it were single family, that property, because of the way it's built, having the multifamily ability to put it in townhomes or duplex style would make more sense yes. than a single family just because of the fact that he's going to be away from the signs and there may there might be ability to you know move things around and and that's what I look at and saw when I you know saw this request was that because of the challenges of the lot it's no different than if we were looking at single family and for the people that have concerns about you know who's moving in or you know those aren't things that we really can consider so you know today he could put two houses on there that were the minimum square foot allowed in the whole city and put whoever he wants in there so we just can't <coughs> use that in how we think about the rezoning and all for the vote okay call for the vote by mrs haney Barker? Yes. Arsley? No. Peters? No. Tyler? No. Covert? No. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. This this is a tie, it does not pass. You have the right to appeal the Planning Commission's decision. Your appeal has to be so, uh, filed with the city clerk within 15 days to notify the adjacent property owners at that and then it'll be placed on the city council agenda okay thank you and so that can be done in two weeks at the city council he has, he has to file within 15 days and then it'll be put on the appropriate city council agenda we usually have to have time to do the verbatim minutes before it can get on the agenda so well, and there won't be notification to adjacent or will there be a all the adjacent property owners will be notified again okay so just wanted to make sure everyone that came out so this because it was a tie vote, it does not pass. Um, it can be appealed to city council and city council has the right to overturn the planning commission's decision on this. Um, if he does uh, appeal this uh, to the uh, city council, um, those adjacent property owners will get notified. Same as they got with this one. Right. Yes. So I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that, but that's only for the adjacent property owners that there would be notification. Okay. Thank you. I'll give it a minute for it to clear out before we get going on this. Okay, the next item are 19-16, 19, 19 David and, and Jana Cook, Connie Jackson uh, and Caroline Sims, 4501 through 4551 West Don Tyson Parkway from A1 to an SF1 to P1. Presented by Mike Thetford. Good evening, Mike Thetford, Wallace Engineering, here to propose a rezone to uh, from ag and single family to P1 for church use. Okay. Staff comments? The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates low density residential use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Acquisition of desirable sites well in advance of need. Uses that commonly have moderate to large scale assemblies of people such as churches, funeral homes, membership organizations and other institutions should be appropriately located on adequate sized parcels with sufficient space to accommodate the off-street parking and accessory needs. Such uses should be located so as to minimize any adverse or undue significant burden on adjacent or adjoining land uses as well as that portion of the street system. Any questions or comments from the audience? Let's do the commission. All for the vote. All for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Passes 8 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on the 28th. Next item R19 17, Pinnacle Roofing and Solar LLC, John Tidwell, 3061 Wagon Wheel Roads, from A1 to C2, presented by Sarah Tidwell. <coughs> okay. Hi, my name is John Tidwell. 
staff comments? The adopted coverings of land use plan indicates commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the companies of land use plan is recommended for approval, improve the city's economic base and tax structure through the promotion of healthy, stable commercial concentrations, assure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and in proper locations, encourage the development of a wide range of commercial development for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood, community, and regional centers. Any questions or comments from the audience? Mission, I have Stand a by. quick question. Um, we have someone here. Had a comment. I'm sorry. Go ahead and come to the mic. I'm sorry, I didn't see you over there. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, my name's Randy Walker, and I live at 2983 Wagon Wheel, and I'm just east of this property, uh, and it's still our residence. We still live there. So I'm a little concerned. Uh, I realize the highest and best use of the property is commercial on Wagon Wheel, uh, but I still live there. So uh, I'm not sure what type of buildings are gonna be built, what type of lighting is gonna be put up. Uh, I know roofers like to get an early start when it gets hot and they start waking me up at five in the morning, uh, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna go well. It wouldn't go well. Can I come over and get you up when they wake me up? Is that okay? If that's what you need to do, sir, you come on over. That's what I'll do. Come get it. Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, I still live there and, and, and we can't go anywhere. I'm on a five lane road now. So I'm kind of stuck. And uh, I don't have anything against Pinnacle Roofing. I hope they're a great company. Uh, but what if they don't make it? And then we've rezoned this and we have no say so what goes in next. It could be any, any type of a building to go next to my home. And it's basically turning my home into a lot as far as I'm concerned. I'm not ever going to be able to sell as a home. There are no really professional offices on Wagon Wheel. It's all metal buildings up and down through. This is going to be our third roofer on Wagon Wheel Road. It must be a good spot. Uh, but I'm just saying, you guys are killing me over here. I mean, I, I, I've lived here. Dale and I went to school together. Uh, I've been here forever. and. Uh, I just want you to do the right thing. I know you have the right to do what you what you want to do, but we've been through a lot out there, and I want you to do the right thing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? Uh, this, I ask Randy if it is, it, is his property that three zero nine five twenty nine eighty three twenty nine eighty three. Okay, yeah. to the to the other side. Okay. Um, the frontage on this for a C2, so uh, ingress, egress, and, and things like that, that would not be an issue. Well, it would be the spacing between driveways. He has a driveway cut right now. He couldn't put another one on there. Would there be enough room between that as far as from that frontage? I don't know. How wide is the property? Do you know? Right around 200 feet. Okay, so it has to have 150 feet between driveways, so it's possible okay. that he could have to do that. But for a C2, they only has to have one access point. Right. Okay. Is there any screening requirements? I'm sorry? Screening between him and the residential? Well, if he builds something new, he'd have to do screening. But I, I'm assuming you're using the existing structure that's there. Are you adding any structures? Because if you are, you're going to have to come back with a large-scale development plan that shows how you're going to lay that out. We talked about that, what screening would be required to the property to the to the east because it is residential and right, it takes right. fencing with, with landscaping and stuff to go with it yeah you'd have to have a lighting plan that shows all of the lighting is contained on your property and doesn't bleed over those kind of things i mean we went over that kind of stuff when we talked about that correct, correct. and drainage wise is uh, retention to, he would have to deal with that too it depends on if he's creating uh you know a, an issue automatically he has to do detention he'd have to prove that He's not creating enough an issue not to have to have detention. It drops off pretty fast yeah. back there. The property to the south of it is already zoned C2. We did that yeah. several months ago. Yeah. Property to the south, is that part of the 3095 or is that a separate yes, property? Yes, it's part of 3095. Yeah. Patsy, on the, uh, the land use plan that I'm looking at, I show neighborhood commercial going from uh, 
Silent Grove Road down to Wildwood Lane. It's it's neighborhood commercial right at the corner, and then that and then this piece of property where the house is is still not. And then we did see to the rest of it. The property to the west to the west of this was already zoned C two. I'm sorry, Patsy. I couldn't hear you. The one on the one of these is Mr. Walker's home. The one to the left of this property is already zoned C two. Is right at the corner of no, it's zoned uh, C one or O one. Well, C1 is neighborhood commercial, right. though. So, right, but which backs up right directly to those houses. It was C1 right adjacent to those houses. This property is not adjacent to those houses. It backs up to a C2 already. So, what The C2 is where? The property around it of 3095 is all C2 that we rezoned probably three, four, or five months ago. Can you, uh, Aaron, can you bring up the zoning map of that area? But the, so, yeah, my, my question is like if you, if it, you know, using the existing structure you know, as, as just an office would fit into a neighborhood commercial type, you know. The office could be that way. Usage. But, if he's, but if he starts to build and has guys coming and going and storing things there, that's not really neighborhood commercial. That's why he's asking for C2. Well, I, I know, but yes. that's, that's why I'm saying is that what, we want straight up C2 right there, or do we want neighborhood commercial? Maybe, I, am I looking at, a, at an old land looking, use plan? We'll look, just a second, we'll look at it. It's hard to tell too, because the colors, there's a light pink, and then there's well, a- Well, and, and there's no set boundary between one and the yeah, other. Yeah, there's, I'm just- It kind of blends together from commercial, regional at the intersection, coming down to uh, commercial itself, and then to neighborhood commercial that backs up to those we've got regional commercial by the interstate then commercial then there's neighborhood commercial from well, about wildwood lane down to silent grove and then it's already been altered because those properties were already zoned c2 This is just the current. This is not the. That this is not the land use plan. That hasn't been updated with the last rezoning. I guess it's online, hasn't it? Yeah, it's showing that C two. Yeah. Yeah, it shows the yeah. C two around it. Yes, that's correct. It's updated. And see, the corner is a one. <laughs> okay, maybe we just might want to update the uh, land use plan. The land use plan needs to be updated after the last rezonings were done. The corner was in your property was in 01 because of a, a former st structure that you had there. That's correct. And the city took that when they widened the road. Right. Which was a I, I whole understand. other thing. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> yeah. Just, just, uh, and, and I, just I just wanted this group to know why that was 01. That's why. It was. Yeah. And it's uh, there's really not enough left there, I don't think, to do much with now. But uh, and all if it's if it's just an office they want. I have no opposition to that. I'm, I'm a lot more worried about lighting, uh, workers coming in at five o'clock in the morning, getting in their trucks, my dog's barking. You know, that's kind of what, I have a reasonable expectation to enjoy my home. And I just don't feel like I'm gonna have it if all those things happen, so. I would also say now that Mr. Walker's gonna come to my house at 5 a.m., I now have a, a concern that they're coming <laughs> at 5 a.m. as well, so. I'm not real enjoyable at 5 a.m. <laughs> But to your earlier question, though, I, when, since he is, if he develops it further, yes. screening requirements between him and you, lighting plan can't be shining off on you. All of those things have to be met if he further develops it from what it is. Any, Aaron, am I wrong? Or you? But can I ask any other structure besides the house? That's what you're saying? Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah, any okay. other structure. Expands it or back. builds a new one. Well, what do you consider supplies. screening? Is uh, Aaron can Aaron's what do you consider screening? Is, uh, it a, is, it, is it a privacy fence? Well, for the the screening requirements for the city, if he has any outdoor storage, it's an eight foot privacy fence that's opaque, which means you can't see through it. And we have a specific materials list that he has to get. He can only choose from that material list. So like it could be a, a shadow box fence if that screens it appropriately. If it doesn't, then he would have to have a solid fence that like can't be seen through. Um, yeah, a few years back they did the outdoor storage, which has the greater requirement of the eight foot to have those impacting uses offset. It has to have landscaping yeah. on that side too. Any development on the site. We'll have to have landscaping as well. Right. 
Yeah. So our staff will, just like many of these other <coughs> projects that came up here, we evaluate multiple items for any kind of impact. You know, planning is here to protect single family when we do our developments down. And he'll have to do a whole commercial design series review in that area because it is a commercial area. So, Robbie, do, do we have any idea how many employees they're planning on? Well, that's not an issue that we discuss with rezoning. It's any of those uh, permitted uses can go into that location. We don't rec, okay. you know, we don't. So it could be a worst case scenario. In my opinion, when you rezone something, it's always worst case scenario. Whatever you consider to be, the I would worst agree with that. That can happen in there if that's okay. Then so if he wants, if he has a hundred people working for him, that's just. Assuming Tough he can fit that on there and make and meet the parking requirements with the size of building, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, technical lot of, confinements, you know, that we just don't address during a rezoning. But to, no, I understand. Order, but I, I, once I, again, I, I got to live with it. I so. appreciate that. Yes. Yeah. I can't address the 5 a.m. part if he'd like. <clears throat> we don't start our work from the office. We start it from the field, and we go out. So if nothing happens at the office in the morning. Yes. And we. We can't. Hear, I'm coming over here because I can't hear. Sure. <laughs> no, you're all right. We don't start our work from our office every morning. We start it from, say, the field, and we go out. So uh, we don't have workers that show up at our office. Um, probably the. I have a foreman who may run by to grab his list of things to do that day, and then he leaves. And our salesmen don't come until probably eight or nine o'clock. Our salesmen are in the field all day, so there's very little. Uh, it's it's me, a production manager, and a uh, uh, office assistant that are pretty much there during the day, and that's about it. All our crews, none of our crews really ever come to our office. Thank you. And keep in mind, we're not saying what he's going to do is that's what's going to happen now. But once we're zoned to C2 again, it's whatever's allowed in a C2 zone can go in there. This will be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mrs. Haney. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Staff will prepare the ordinance that goes to council on the 28th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, R19-18, Hillcrest Holdings, LLC, 7253 through 7321 West Sunset Avenue from A1 to C5, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, this is the Harbor Crossing um, facility there at the southwest corner of Harbor or uh, Jones and 412. Um, <laughs> The reason for the rezoning, um, we've got a non-large scale going through for Smoothie King, which will be on that closest corner to the signal. Um, and I'll answer any questions. If we're to have a drive up window, it has to be rezoned to C5. So they're asking to rezone the entire piece of property. The adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates regional commercial use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval the city's economic base and tax structure to the promotion of healthy stable commercial concentrations ensure adequate land allocation for commercial areas of sufficient size and improper locations encourage the development of a wide range of commercial development for the residents and tourists to include neighborhood community and regional centers any questions or comments from the audience it's to the commission <coughs> Jason, i remember this property having some sewer issues in the past have those been resolved <laughs> so it's kind of tricky. It's on Tawny Town sewer. There is a lift station back there, um, and it pumps to where to their sewer system. Um, well, that probably goes to NACA then, right? Eventually, yes. So it and goes. It, it remained that way because when it detached from Tawny Town and came into Springdale, that was part of their grant and loan process, and the property couldn't be taken out of that to go to Springdale sewer at the time. Okay. Be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Vote by Mrs. Haney. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Matthew. Passes 8 0. Staff will prepare the ordinance to go to council on the 28th. Thank you. Next section is conditional use C 19 07 Anna 
per, forgive me for from mis mispronouncing Negrete. Negret. Negret. Yes. Uh, 2310 and 2262 North 40th Street, Tandem Lot Splits. Yes. Um, and as we said, my name is Anna Negret, and we are here because um, the property, the way it sits, is currently around eight acres. We are proposing to split it into three separate pieces. We would like to buy the middle piece that you see there. And we are here because the result of that would be the left piece. Um, it would be considered a tandem lot and I can answer any questions. Staff comments? Aaron, you wanna address, are there any concerns left with this one? We're gonna, we're gonna have to move him up front so he doesn't get so many steps. I have a mic back there. Yeah, I know. Sometimes we do. Give so, you a headset. Um, they have sat down with us, uh, along with our development teams. We have worked through this about as good as we can. There's a few administrative <laughs> changes we gotta do on the plat, but nothing that we feel like is a uh, concern from a development standpoint that we have. They are going to be moving the front lots onto actual sewer, the city sewer, which was the major concern that we worked through. Um, they worked through the uh, homeowners on the front. It was on septic, so we had some land division issues kind of on that. Now that that's kind of gone, the back lot is actually has sewered on it already, um, which is usually what we don't see in a tandem lot. So one of the biggest hurdles we already have, this lot served by sewer in the back, the back so the water in the front, they'll obviously have to serve the middle property. So the flag lot will provide the easement and access for that. With our tandem lots, uh, you're not allowed to build in the flag lot. So the building restriction line will be only on that back portion back there. So still allowing for some orderly kind of development if possible. Um, it's about the best you're gonna get probably for a long narrow lot like that that is trapped by other subdivisions, so. Really, staff didn't feel like, I, I didn't feel like we had any concerns at this point. A few other details to work through, but no major concerns. If you have any questions, let me know. Is the entrance off carriage crossing? The oh. entrance will be off carriage crossing. The middle lot actually has uh, 130 square foot of right of way when it is only required to have like 70. Um, the tandem lot does have some right of way frontage on it. It just did not have enough to meet the exact of the standard lot. So they went ahead and did a little additional access easement to where almost the driveways would line up and it would present access for the back into the one. So probably we only have one curb cut there as well, probably. It's yep. a really unique situation. Out yep. There. It's not very often. We have quite a few tandem lots today and, and most of them are working out in a pretty orderly fashion. That's not usually the case when we get to our tandem lots. That's why that ordinance is so strong and in there to kind of control that. Okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Yeah, if you'll come to the mic. Hey, John Parker, I'm from uh, 4339 Kings Place. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't think we've had a chance to actually see this, uh, this plot yet and see what the <coughs> expectations are and what they're planning to use for it. We did have concerns about access easement. Uh, it sounds like if they're coming off carriage crossing, maybe I don't have such a concern about it anymore, but I know that some of these other neighbors uh, that we have may. Um, does this, I have a question though, when, they, when you split this into a tandem lot, that back lot, does that become completely landlocked and inaccessible at that point? But by the definition of tandem lot, it has access to carriage crossing. It just doesn't okay. have, uh, doesn't so have the, Frontage. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. So this is an SF2 lot, and uh, I think it's seven. <coughs> Can everybody speak into the mic? Yeah. Maybe it's just me. I know I'm, yeah. I'm always in hard area. Yeah. Sound is terrible. Yeah. Here. I need to hear. Yeah. The uh, the back lot is required to have at least 70 foot of frontage. It only has about half of that. Um, so that's why she came in because our zoning code dictates it has to meet a certain width on the right of way. So it, touch, it actually touches the right-of-way that is in the carriage crossing plat. Um, it's just when she doesn't have that exact thing, it kicks in a conditional use because these typically don't look as square and uniform as that. Usually they're worse. They're farther out. They're harder to develop. This one actually has sewer and water close by, the sewer in the back. So they will access it through carriage crossing, and there's just a small access easement there to give them a little bit of frontage to line up their driveway so there's only one curb cut. So, yeah, and, and so we've had water issues with, there's two act, there's two waterways that come across this, and Mr. Peters, you've actually did a study for the way, I came out and helped us with this before, 
um, from when carriage crossing was put in, all that water just was redirected down and it actually came over my property and was up my property about six feet when we had a, it was a pretty big storm. But uh, this is going to redirect even more of that water. And I know that Mr. Voss uh, actually has a problem and as well as Mr. Smith who live over there, they've already got a water issue that comes up on their property when uh, there's quite a bit of rain. And so as you start to, you know, put more houses, redirect water, you're gonna cause even more problems for King's Place and that's the downstream side of that. Uh, would ask that you guys come out and at least take a look at that and take a study of it and make sure that you got the appropriate drainage in there because before you just didn't have it. Uh, we've had people come out and try to do their own drainage and it just doesn't work that way, um, obviously. Um, we don't know how many homes are trying to go into this. Do we know how many homes are planning to put on this property once they do the split? The middle one will have one structure. The back will be restricted to the density requirements for the zoning. Which is, can be no more than four. Units per acre, yeah. If they can meet, you know, and, and mm -hmm. get the access points in there. And it would take a hefty development to be able to fund yeah. those requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine because of those waterways, I don't know what kind of, uh, you know, huge piping you had to put in there or bridges to actually access that property. Uh, would be very interesting to see that uh, as you're moving forward. Um, the septic and sewer, now, where do you attach to septic, I mean, for sewer on the back lots? Uh, okay, so we got our nifty little So right around in here, there's sewer access. Is that from carriage crossing? It's just something that extended to the lot for sewer and water um, from the back subdivision. Then the other one will tie in, uh, there is a manhole right across mm -hmm. the way that they'll tie into here. And they have spoken with Springdale Water and they'll have to get their plans reviewed and approved through Springdale Water, so. Okay. Yep. So there won't be any septic systems left on this track once all this is completed, correct? There will probably be one but they are authorized to have that and they're over an acre so they can if so the, necessary so the middle lot yeah. could be on septic because it, it's large it enough. could be but i think y'all want to go to sewer right right because i think they want to stay out of that drainage space it, it does it's limited per a little bit of size there but that would be regulated from the county health department for the parking usually an acre lot or something you can so got it okay okay well, thank you that answered my questions thank you any other questions or comments? My name is Dave Creek. I live at uh, 4085 King's Place. I am the second house on the left as you uh, leave 40th Street. I'll probably be um, just behind you guys, I guess. The the lot split, the most west part, doesn't really affect me a whole lot uh, because I'm up on the upper side and I'm all about being good neighbors. I like, I like the woods now right back there, but my question is, is where do you guys anticipate building your home or do you know that yet or how is it going to be facing? You said where? Where? Uh, kind of what, what kind of where on that piece of property? That's my only question. Where that track is labeled. Where what is? If you come up to the says, mic. Where it says track two, you're looking right at that location. Right, there. right here in the middle. Okay. Is where See, I'm saying. right here. Yeah. So right where it's labeled track two. That's probably that's what I, what gonna I figured, be because yeah, the high part of the ground. Yeah, there before. is a good chunk of woods right there, yes. and we're going to do everything in our power to not cut it down. No, no, so, no, I understand. Yes. No, it's your, your church. And which property. way will the house face? It will face track three, pretty much. Oh, face down? It, yeah, it'll face towards track three. Okay. Now, when I checked with the planning department, uh, I guess you're anticipating building a shop building? Uh, it's a garage. A detached garage? It's considered an attached, detached garage. Attached, detached. Yeah. For, so the house is going to be facing this yes. and the garage? Yeah, the garage will be behind the houses. The house right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Entering here. Okay. You guys, so, yeah. Any, any other questions? That's a question. Okay. <clears throat> Fred Coates, 4223 Kings Place. Um, 
I don't think it really matters what we say after the way you guys voted on that Chris Brown situation, but I'm still going to get my two cents in. I hear people talking about sewer. Well, and they can get hooked on the city sewer. Every one of those homes from the middle of that plat have septic systems in their backyard. We have water drainage problems. Um, I'm all for having another neighbor if you guys can figure out what you're going to do with the water. I brought a picture of my fence. I'll just show it to this guy. You can see the water line where it comes up when it floods. You can see the dirt where it's washing out. You can see the mud. You can see the water line. You can see the dirt. You can see the water line. You can see the lack of any grass that's there. You can see no grass because every time it rains, it floods. Okay, so you add a roof line, you add a, a structure. Uh, my question is, what do you do with the water? The neighbor below me has a swimming pool that flooded once last year because of stormwater draining. Who's gonna pay to refill this pool? So on the water piece on it, so the property itself. So we've got water, we've got, we got septic system. We've got a nice there. I believe that the house on the top of the street is hooked up to the city sewer. Dave, you're on septic, right? Yeah, we're all set up. We're all septic on the back side of that lot on the east Let's okay. just let it flood. Let's let it get into our septic system. Let's put the sewage right on down the road. Whatever you guys want to do. But. So the question I have is uh, when a new structure is built for the property that they're on, it could not increase any of the water. You know where I'm going with my question on that? We're talking about a single family structure. Right. Not a subdivision. Right. So that but you're also property, talking about two roofs. Let me you finish. Talked about let me finish. Even on a single family like that, when you're, when you're putting a house there, um, you have to manage your own water situation for that property, correct? Well, that's that's an engineering question, but yeah. There is also a design project going on on improvements to 40th Street from Falcon down to the uh, entrance to the Game and Fish, which has to address the drainage in that too. I'm not sure where they are on design of that whole road and all those improvements. I know it's being looked at because we're aware there's some major drainage issues down through there. But it is looked to be one of the bond issues of how we address that drainage issue. So, I, and I, as it's my understanding, I don't know if Carl can answer that. I think the the plans are not far enough along to have met with the neighborhood yet. But I do know there is some concern about the drainage that's going on in that whole area. That's all I've got. Thank you. So, uh, Carl, do you know what the what the status of the 40th Street bond program project is? I'm not exactly sure yet. No, okay. But those would drain towards 40th? No, drain to North. Street. Well, I the understand, well, I understand today, here. but yeah. when you would put a new structure on that, would the intent to make that to where it would drain? To 40th Street? Yeah. Probably yeah. not. No. I, I, I can't see that going on. I, don't, I'm not, I know enough engineering to be really dangerous, but I know you don't usually send it the opposite direction of where it normally goes. But again, I can I, I go back to the design of that street and the drainage of that whole area is going to have to be have to be addressed. I'm Roger Voss. I live at 4321 Kings Place. I'm at the bottom of the. It's actually not all the way at the end, but uh, pretty close uh, next to John. And Fred's up from me a little bit, but the water that goes underneath the culvert that is in the cul-de-sac down there runs right through my property coming in from carriage crossing across through there. My neighbor, the Smiths are the ones that the pool flooded last year because of the water it was so high coming through there. Um, they came out, the city came out, was it two years ago and cleared out past the cul-de-sac, right? Yeah, into Pinewoods. All this water that's coming through there that's going to be going into the septic systems that are already in there, that water's going to be going into the lake at Pinewoods. That's where it all dumps into. So that's another thing that we need to think about. Now, my 
question, did I hear that the back track could have four places on it? It did is I? zoned SF2, which would allow for free, four units per acre maximum. Okay. Well, that's, you know, my house backs up to that. Um, and that's already done in that whole piece, right? That's it's already done. zoned SF2. It, oh, the whole okay. thing could be developed with four units per acre for the entire track. It's already zoned SF2. Okay. My, but my big problem is the water. And I can't keep grass, you know, and y'all can come out there and look. I've, I've tried. I've put vines and rocks and everything. It takes all the rocks and moves them. And, I mean, we had big rocks, and they're gone. Uh, it's that much water flow through there now. It wasn't that way before they built Carriage Crossing. And uh, of course my neighbors put a fence and he showed you the picture of the fence where the water gets up on it. Uh, it used to go to his back door, but since they got the fence there, it sort of turned it more onto my property. But uh, it, it, the water is the big issue uh, in my opinion. We live up on top of the hill. My house is not going to flood. If it floods, Springdale's flooding. But, yeah, so, but that's well, I think the engine department will take note that there are concerns about that whole drainage basin, and I know it's being discussed with the design of 40th Street. Okay, and on that 40th Street, uh, I was talking to Mr. Lawson about that. I've been talking to him for about eight years on that. So, uh, but right there in front of Smith School, that's about as dangerous as area as you can get. Uh, the Drainage needs to be taken care of. The sidewalks needs to be put in there. The street needs to be widened out. And I can tell you, Mrs. Phillips has been in the mayor's office two or three times talking about the water coming across his property. So there is a lot of awareness to that there is a drainage issue. But you might call his office and remind him that it not it doesn't stop at just Mrs. Phillips's property. It goes on down through that area too. Oh, it. I mean, it it comes down there quickly. Yep. I have a question. Is this property in the flood zone? No, none of this property is in the flood zone. No, that's correct. <clears throat> I'll have to disagree with that. It floods, but it's not a designated flood area on the FEMA map. I was told when I bought my property that the bottom half of mine was in the 100 years floodplain. You have to have, do you carry flood insurance? No, I live up on top of the hill. I, the I bottom part know. of it does. Can we, can we turn on, go back to the, to the zoning map and see if the flood map, the flood zone's on there. I didn't think it was, but it has a drainage area, but I don't think it's a designated flood plain area, but it may be. According to engineering GIS, this zone is zone X. So. I'm sorry? This is zone X. It is? Yeah. Okay. It's not a flood has to Okay. It is on, it is on, yeah. Zone X okay. is out. That's what I thought. Not in a flood zone. Right. The property that goes through these that subdivision, is it in a floodplain too? This property's not, I understand. Is the other property in a I can't pull it up my iPad and I do not always agree on how we do things. Yes, there is no floodplain in the surrounding area. The uh, the surveyor is required by state law to put that on there if there's a floodplain. So there yeah, is no floodplain on this no property. Flood I didn't think there was. No. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Floods, but it's not a floodplain. To the commission. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. Covert. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Tanner Lot split passes 8 0. Uh, staff will prepare the resolution that goes to council on the 28th. Next item C 19 08 DH McJunkin Produce Incorporated 4579 West Sunset Tanner Lot split presented by <coughs> ESI. Thank you, Jason Apple with ESI. Um, I'm going to call this a temporary tandem lot split. So it's kind of a tricky situation. Um, our client 
wishes to close on the the front say two acres of this pro of this property um, and currently there is a structure that crosses two of those property lines um, a couple months ago we brought um, the Tommy's car wash that will be on the I guess the western lot of the frontage and with that project we have a new street that will split that lot line um, and we will come back with a plat to plat that and so then the southern piece which is currently tandem will have access to that street um, so we're asking for a, a tandem use uh, conditional use for a tandem lot split um, for short term okay the tandem lot cannot be approved and signed off on until the building is gone and I have from your office saying that it is scheduled to be demolished on 515? Yes. Okay. Or 14. It's either 14 or 15, but it's, well, it's soon. My uh, email says 515. Okay. <laughs> but we won't sign it until that has been removed. Understood. Any questions or comments from the audience? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. I'll vote. Well, sorry. I was just going to ask if it's temporary. Oh, I'm sorry. Ben, would, would you be willing to put a time on that? How long when the so, conditional use would expire? So we, uh, we're we going to take the building down, and then they're going to close. And this will happen, and then the large scale will be built at that time. Large scale's already so, been approved. Yeah, we, we've got the approved large scale, yeah. but then we've got to build the street. So I, I just don't know how long that would be in a year. Large scale's good for a but year. That's what I was I mean, just asking. You know, Maybe in two years? We've got to have access for the car wash to build it. The road has to be built for that car wash access as well. So, um, sure, two years. Okay. Willing to put a two-year time limit on it? Yes. Okay. Additional use, tandem lot split, splits uh, two years on this. I had a call for the vote by Mr. Cover. Yes, sir. <clears throat> David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. Staff Animal. will prepare the resolution goes to council on the 28th. So the building should be down by the time we get to council, correct? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Passes 8 0. So, uh, last conditional use C 19 09, and Mark Wabi Lane Apartments, LLC, 580 Randall Wabi Lane. East Randall Wabi Tandem Lot Split Splits uh, presented by Balloon Associates. George came with Balloon Associates. Uh, they're just doing this for financing purposes. Um, other than that, the large scale's already been approved. Uh, they're going to be doing it on on where the large scale. They're basically breaking out the new buildings uh, from the old ones so they can get better financing through the banks. Staff comments. Aaron, do we have, I don't think we have anything left. It did put the access that has to come out off of uh, the neighboring property that they're purchasing the house for to give the second access point. Yeah, on this one, it's just going to be a, because we've heard a large scale that we've kind of run through the ringer on. Uh, I mean, they came to you guys twice on that before they got almost all the staff comments yet. We haven't even released it for permitting, but for financial reasons, uh, for tax benefit and everything, they do need to get this lot subdivided our big thing was getting the other fire access lot tied to this one so it was on our conditional use um, but other than that no i mean it's already served by sewer water uh, and you know we we have a development plan on that so is, is there shared access for some of the common areas the full like area anybody in the front will have full access to all the common areas in the back so even with the split, there's something written written in there yeah, to this, give this that is protection. Basically, when the fiscal year changed over, for them to get their uh, tax rebates, for them to be able to put as many things as we ask through our multifamily design centers, the only way they can do that for a low-income development is to get tax rebates. And this allows them to do that by separating out from a tax standpoint because the other development's already there. So this is very common in, like, some of our restricted age developments or our um, kind of moderated income developments. 
and it is essential to the project. It, this project will not be successful without these, uh, the, the financing or rebates on this. Any questions or comments from the audience? To the commission? Call for the vote. Call for the vote by Mrs. Haney. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Arsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. I split passes 8-0. Thank Staff you. will prepare the resolution goes to council on the 28th. Uh, next section, large-scale development. We have L19-11 Springdale Animal Shelter. East of Highway 265, south side of East Don Tyson Parkway, presented by McClellan Consulting Engineers. Good evening, I'm Chris Bakunas with McClellan Engineers. Um, just to give you a quick overview, this is the new Springdale Animal Shelter. It's about 10,400 square feet. Uh, there's a main building there uh, where they'll house their operations and then two uh, kennels buildings to the south. 16 customer parking stalls and 11 employee parking. We're going to utilize the depression in the rear of the site for detention. And then there's some exercise yards for the dogs on the south side of the building. Happy to answer any questions. Staff comments? Uh, standard comments. All utility comments from utility companies must be addressed prior to approval construction plans. There is some concern with the water department about the outside kennels water getting into the septic system. I mean, to the uh, sanitary sewer. That, ne that will need to be addressed. Uh, underground utilities, if it's uh, would be required, anything excluding 12 kV and above. Uh, all internal walkways shall be de distinguished from driving surfaces with durable, low maintenance surface materials. Are you showing any changes in materials? I'm not. And can pavement markings be considered to meet that requirement, or does it have to be a it has separate to be pavers, material? Pavers, bricks, or scored concrete. Okay. Something to it. It can't just be. Okay. It just can't be. Uh, painted okay as far as that's concerned uh, sidewalks at least six feet from the facade of the building uh, what for the uh, landscaping for foundation landscaping yeah and it doesn't look like we're probably meeting that on the east side <coughs> of the building currently I assume that's why the you have yeah. foundation landscaping it's we, just not wide enough correct it's not right at the building um, it's I don't know if we can zoom in on that plan at all there's there's some planting um, raised planters okay. in front there the intent was to provide the foundation landscaping in a different method rather than doing it adjacent to the building is that what you're telling me yes yes it's offset from the building okay. uh roof lines varied i think this back buildings there's no variation in the roof line okay yeah and I'll, I'll get with the architect to address that okay i don't believe uh carl are there any engineering issues on this project <clears throat> Uh, I believe most of our comments came from our large scale inspector. It's just constructability comments, so okay. we won't hold it up from planning commission for okay. approval. Okay. Yeah, I think we can work through the majority of those pretty easily. So I'll we'll can ask for any variance. <coughs> no, ma'am. Need to work through those. Yeah. Okay. What was the uh, screening on the south side? Yeah, so I have received a few calls just from adjacent property owners um, concerned with screening noise. Um, so we have tried to use landscaping to mitigate some of the noise uh, to the best of our ability. It's, I think it's unrealistic to think that we can take it away altogether. Um, but with the detention facility to the rear, there's a lot of trees that are starting to come up there. So we're proposing to leave all that on the south side of the property as is right now. So I'm hoping that will kind of help mitigate some of those views noise Would there be any berm <laughs> yeah so there? the berm will be on the west side so that will be in between the nursing home and the okay, but nothing on the south side no how far is it from the edge of the structure to the property line on the south side do you know um i don't know off the top of my head it's it's quite a ways though Aaron, can you go back to the site plan please and we probably don't actually show the whole site the site's no, fairly so. big we're only using maybe an eighth of the site maybe a quarter of it but a detention pond will go back yeah can you go to the is there a, a site plan that shows so you can see where the detention pond itself is yeah so that shows the entire limits there so that detention pond was pretty much a third of the way south through the property and then it comes back up on a hill before okay. the properties to the south 
But any landscaping you'd plan on the west side of that, probably minimum standards? Well, on the west side, they're doing a berm to, to create that landscaping between. Right, but then there's a lot of landscaping shown in there as well on, in, in addition to the berm and that whole piece. I just want people to understand as far as it may take a couple of years before it matures as far as having that type of buffer. Yes, correct. And same with the vegetation that's around the detention pond too. It's, I mean, it's probably four year old growth or so that's there currently, but yeah. it'll continue to mature. Because there could be future expansion of this south. Um, the only future expansion that I'm aware of right now is to the east, but as the design consultant, I'm not privy to all the conversations on that. Okay. I think they gotta figure out how to pay for all this before they worry about well, uh, no, I, I understand that, but I mean, you continue to go south with it or even east with it. We Those would be. As far as berms and things like they that. They would have to come back with a revised large scale if they're going to expand it. Right. And with the detention directly to the south, we are limited, I think, on expansions to the south. It is pretty steep to go down into that depression and then back up on the south side. Okay. So they, they would be limited what you could do back there. Any questions or comments from the audience? My name is Shane uh, Cluck, C L U C K. I'm the administrator next door at 1393 East on Tyson from Walnut Grove. Uh, my concern is, you know, of course. I was here and we had brought residents, everything, you know, when, when we, you initially had proposed it, the city had initially proposed to build it. Of course, I know that that's passed. And I know that, you know, the mayor had said that they would do whatever they could to mitigate the sounds and whatever they could do to help us. Uh, you know, and if you look at C601, I don't know which one of those that you have there, but C601, if you look at that, you know, we're, west of the proposed site i mean due west literally right on the line and the way that the property lays essentially the whole animal shelter will literally almost be on our fence line my concern is i mean you take barking dogs 80 90 decibels that's pretty loud i mean if you're at home i live in a neighborhood quiet neighborhood at that you get two or three dogs barking in the middle of the night and i even sleep with a fan to drown out noise and sometimes it'll wake me up and my big concern is the berm, uh, the vegetation, trees, and the wall. I mean, you know, are we going to have a wall there that's 8, 10, 12 foot tall? Going to be, is it going to be concrete? Is it going to be cinder block? Is it going to be sound deadening? I mean, you know, and, and you take, when I looked at the C601, I see all the slots, and it looked like there were 68 slots. Uh, there and I don't know if that means that there's going to be room for 68 dogs per se or you know would there be two to each slot but you know you take dogs and you put them into a situation where they're in an environment with, where the acoustics amplify that say you you, you take 115 <coughs> 120 decibels I mean that's loud and then if you take and multiply that by numerous numerous dogs uh, or animals or whatever that may be. I mean, that's going to be very disturbing for the residents that we have. And you got to keep in mind, I mean, the way I liken it, and I was talking to one of my staff earlier today, is like, say if you go to a ball game or say you go to a NASCAR, say you go to anything, sure, it's loud, sure, it's noisy, but we have the choice. We can get away from that. These people, a lot of them are bed bound. Uh, you know, they're infirm. They require mu much care. You know, we have to provide a lot of things for them. And, and I want you all to keep in mind directly adjacent because the parking lot where the parking lot is proposed will be kind of in line with our parking lot. Where this berm is going to be and where the dog kennels actually are, where they are for exercise and things of that nature, will be almost directly across from our memory care unit where we house approximately 20 women and most of them have dementia or Alzheimer's. So they're already confused, they're already agitated. So then we get these loud barking dogs. And, and I mean, you know, I mean, you can't do completely get rid of a dog barking. You can't completely get rid of that noise. I understand that. But I mean, I think that we need to take 
drastic measures to mitigate the sounds and noise and do whatever we can to help in that regard. I mean, uh, you know, because you take a little 80-year-old lady that's confused and demented, you know, first off, she hears a dog barking at midnight or 2 in the morning, she's going to think she needs to get up and let her dog in. Somebody's let the dog outside. Uh, you take somebody that already has behaviors or has issues and they have to take medication to, to help calm them down. Well, you know, our approach is to do things to provide them the most independence that we can without limiting them or restraining them chemically or anything of that nature. So you take a bunch of animals making a lot of noise and you know, you get one or two dogs barking, next thing you know, you got a whole bunch of dogs barking. Then, you know, my concern is the quality of life that the residents who reside in our facility have in regards to that. So, I mean, you know, and I'm kind of like Donald Trump. I think we need to build a wall. I mean, it needs to be big, it needs to be thick, it needs to be sound deadening, you know. 10 or 12 foot tall, we need a massive berm of dirt, we need all kinds of vegetation and trees and stuff. I mean, you know, because it's a big deal. I mean, it really is. Uh, you know, and again, back to what we had initially had talked about when it was proposed that one would be built next to us, and, when, and you know, you know, y'all were looking at multiple pieces of land. I don't mean the Planning Commission in general, but the city. Uh, you know, if we were to build a new facility, I mean, we have to go through agencies and we have to get the, uh, I mean, and they look at our, our, our plan, they look at everything around us. We wouldn't be able to build next to a liquor store. I mean, we've got a liquor store right next to us. Uh, we wouldn't be able to build next to a development such as an animal shelter. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't be able to build a new facility there. And we've got all of these things encroaching around us. And, you know, I'm not against animal shelters. I'm not against helping animals. I've got animals at home. Some of the animals I have come from animal shelters. But I mean, I think it's unrealistic for anybody to believe that we can just have a small little berm and a little wall and a few trees and mitigate the kind of noise, you know, that's going to be uh, emanating from that facility. Uh, you know, and I just ask that y'all do due diligence and make sure that, and I know it may cost more money, it may be a little more effort, but I mean, this impacts the quality of life of the residents who reside there. And I ask that y'all take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments? It's to the commission. Call for the vote. Call for vote by Mr. I'm sorry, motion. motion. Oh, I'm so sorry. Motion to move forward. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Haney. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Art scale passes 8 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Next section is Board of Adjustments, uh, B19 24, Betty Cardwell, 236 Old Wire Road, variance for deviation of fence height from three feet, front from three feet to six feet, uh, presented by Betty Caldwell. My name is Betty Cardwell. I live at 236 Old Wire Road. I'm asking for a variance from a three-foot fence to a six-foot privacy fence. I have a grandson that is autistic. If he gets outside, I have to chase him down the road. I've done chased him four times down it. And he hasn't played outside in four years. Not since he was two because once he learned how to run, if he gets outside, he runs down the street. He's almost been hit twice, once by a big rig. So that's why I'm asking for it to be from a three foot to a six foot. And I brought up pictures and to show that it won't interfere with the stop sign that's on the corner. And I've got the permission of my neighbors. They said they don't care if I put that six foot fence up because they've seen me chase him down the road. Thank you. Staff comments? As long as it doesn't create a, uh, an issue at the site triangle at the street intersection, I don't think staff has any problem with it. No, it won't. Uh, the stop sign is here and the fence will be over here so they can see around the fence 
when they pull up to the stop sign, they can see it. It's kind of a it. unique situation because it's a, it's on a corner there at, and it's an odd shaped lot. And that, is it going to be inside the tree where the trees are? Yes. You know, so the trees will be outside of the fence. No, they will be inside the fence. Aaron's going to. So he's been it, working with her to to make sure we know. Okay. Exactly I mean, it, go. yeah, because uh, depending where the fence goes. It could affect the sight line. Yeah, and that's and, my and we've already talked about there. that. Yeah. It would be constructed where it would not interfere with the sight okay. lines okay, for the intersection there, because we don't want that either. But I mean, to it, allow her, it would be the city's role to make sure that I mean, before any posts are put in or anything well, like that, would there would it have to be marked and approved or? No. Go ahead. Ed, we do we we don't permit fences. Don't permit. Yeah. Okay. They don't permit fences under six feet, but I mean, we can work with them to make sure that site visibility trial. It's the first thing we said. The, the reason why we were like, you bring this forward is because when we were looking at the house, usually the orientation <clears throat> of the house dictates the fence. Like you can clearly tell, but there is no gable. There is no change. There's yeah. doors on either side. They primarily use the other uh, street. And so when she brought it to us, we were like, well, we can't definitively as a staff tell which side this is so we would feel more appropriate if you're able to get a variance be legal be within the rules she's like i want to do it right i want to do it before and the only thing would be that one little corner there where you have the intersection to make sure it's pulled back for visibility i just realized i realize there's no building permits but yeah. i think it's i think it's a responsibility of the city to right. really make sure they understand where to put that yes we we went out on the site yeah. to check it and i mean it it I you think it needs to be marked where it goes yeah um i mean because to me if it's if it's on the inside if it's on the outside of these trees, mm -hmm. it's got to be awfully close, or you're gonna not be able to see. No. Uh, so. If you'll speak into the mic on there. Yeah, she's coming around so they can hear you. Sorry, she's kind of hard to hear. I've gotten. I've had a guy look at it, and he said, with the way that he would put it up, going around the trees, the stop sign it would not because it will not cause any interference with the <coughs> traffic or them seeing around it because it has to be brought up into the yard a little bit because of an electrical thing that's sitting in the corner of the yard. So we have to clear that. You have a fence company that's gonna put it up for you? Uh, yes. Okay, could you ask the fence company to just send us a drawing of where they're gonna put it and we'll look at it and. So we all agreed well, uh, to it. Before. That's why I uh, took the pictures so that you guys could see where I wanted to put it. Well, I think There's, we're looking for assurances put in the right place. That's why I'm asking could the fence company just provide us with a drawing of where it's going to be and then we all know where it's going to be so we can make sure that site triangle is taken care of. Can we get that? The flags that are up there don't have to do with your fence, right? Huh? All the little flags that are up, those aren't to do with your fence. No, they they marked where the, where the water lines line, are. power okay. lines, and everything was. That's why uh, the green one that's up in the corner, it's got an orange flag by it. So we will be starting on the other side of that and then bringing it up. And there's a big ditch in the front yard. And we'll be about this far from that big ditch into the yard. <coughs> I think we can work out where the location it's going to be so it doesn't affect the site training. I think there's, she really has a need to have that fence put up. And we just need to work with her uh, directly to make sure we get it. Let him go. Any questions? Let him or, go. Uh, any, hang on. Any questions or comments from the audience? Go ahead, Colby. I went by this property. Um, it, wouldn't it be feasible, too, for the city to move the stop sign? I mean, because it sets pretty far off I, I i don't know because i'm not in charge of market we can get with them and see if it could be relocated to a different location i think that would there free are up rules her. as to where it has to be in relation right. for site distance that may be an opportunity where she can maximize yeah. the yard size but i too. think with i think we've got enough people that can work with her to get it in the in the best place it can be so she can have the fence if you all agree to allow it to be a a taller fence yeah as long as i mean lance pants he's fine with it. i don't mind working yeah. with ron and neighborhood yeah, we resources can, we can to work do this. that out yeah. to make sure we get it in the right place yes. if you all approve the height restrictions the fence. He's over there. oh yep. we understand nobody's questioning yeah. your reason for it yeah. nobody's questioning we, you know the reason for me is the way your property sits is unique in that mm -hmm. the front yard 
that's kind of really a side yard just because you're a corner lot. Right. But we have to maintain that side angle. Otherwise, if a, if a person drives up, yeah, I mean, and if staff has been there to yeah. the site, then I think that's probably more than we normally do. I, th I think we understand it's important. Right? The, the only reason we came forward was because of, in case, based on the look of the house, in case the interpretation changed, say Patsy and I left, because it is a unique house, we wanted to go ahead and, if she was willing, come with the variance, do it right, get it approved. That way we'd have a shot at it. So, yeah. All right, so this is to the commission. Yeah. Be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Yeah. Call for a vote by Mr. Covert. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Parsley. Yes. Peters. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Covert. Yes. David. Yes. Haney. Yes. Okay. The height increase has been approved. We will get together with you, with Aaron and, and Ron, and we'll help you figure out where it needs to go. Okay. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. And just say. It. Thank you for your time. He's done a fantastic job because this is a hard session to sit through, and I want to applaud him and applaud you guys for he's well, good kid. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate it. All right. Next item B, 19-25, Terry and Marcy Dean, 4501 Bonnie Avenue, variance for deviation of size setback from 8 feet to 2 feet. Variance for deviation of rear setback from 20 feet to 15 feet uh, presented by Terry Dean. Yes, my name is Terry Dean. I live at 4501 Bonnie Avenue. And I'm here tonight to ask for a variance on the setback requirements uh, in our neighborhood. On the side, it's currently, I think the variance is eight foot and I would like to have, a, have the building set at six foot from the edge of the property. And then in the back, from the 20 foot variance that's required to five foot. Okay, so you're doing it from eight to six, not eight to two. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and from 20 to 15? T from 20 to five, actually, five. yes. Okay, are there any uh, easements on the back <coughs> of that piece of property? Yes, ma'am, there are. And is this a permanent structure? Well, according to the regulations, I think it's supposed to be determined uh, as a permanent property but I'm not planning to pour any kind of slab footing or anything like that, but it will be anchored like you would with a uh, trailer house or something like that. Okay, and the reason why you can't put it any closer and meet the setbacks? Um, just aesthetically, I, we have a, a little garden in the backyard that my wife uh, piddles in and I'm wanting to build me a, uh, she shed, he shed, or whatever you want to call it, so that I have some place to go once I start retirement here in a few months. You have a shed back there already? Yes, ma'am, I do. It's uh, approximately 10 by uh, 12. And it's portable? Yes, ma'am. And it sits closer than 20 feet from the rear and eight Yes, it, it currently sits um, about five foot from the east side of the yard and about four foot from the back side of the yard, uh, from the fence in the back. So I'm actually moving it in a little bit, um, but I'm, you know, I'm obviously increasing the size of it. Okay, so the one that's there is going to go away, and you're yes, doing a larger one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. Ryan, you want to talk about there, setbacks? There is a 10-foot utility easement on the back of that, so it will not be allowed to go in the easement. Yeah. So it, it can't go to five feet because you can't put it in the easement. Okay, so you have to go to 10 on the rear. So if I'm 10 feet. 10 foot from the fence in the back, that, that would be satisfactory? Well, you still have to have a variance, so it would go from 20 to 10. Yes. And from eight to six on the sides. Yes. Dwayne, you want to comment from the fire department standpoint? Standard response, we don't support rear side setbacks. If you do allow it, it needs to comply with the building code for any fire uh, separations. But if it's six feet over six, or Greater than five feet away, it wouldn't require anything, sorry. Okay. Um, the application, oh, I'm sorry. No. <coughs> Any questions or comments from the audience? <coughs> uh, the application said that it says the desired structure size is 16 by 20, which requires setbacks that make the property less usable and attractive. Is, that, is, it, a, is it a matter of how big the accessory structure is that's causing it? to be yes uh, 
it, it's my understanding that anything over 120 feet uh, or square foot has to meet certain setback requirements. If it doesn't, if it's under that, I, did, I was told it didn't have to have any kind of requirements. Hey, can so, address that? Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, the city ordinance allows for a single accessory structure, less than 120 square feet, portable. It can be in the setbacks. There's no building permit required. That's whether it's commercial property or residential. And then anything bigger than that requires a building permit, then it has to meet all the setback requirements, and that's why he needs a variance if he needs if he wants to put it this will require in the back a building part of his permit property. Because yes. Because of the size. Yeah, he'll have to get a building permit because From of the size. From 120 to 320 square feet. It's pretty big. How tall is it? Uh, I'm anticipating to be about 15, uh, excuse me, about 12 to 13 foot high. By ordinance, it would have to be less than 16 feet. All accessory structures have to be less is, than 16 feet. Port and slab? Did you see your port and slab? No, sir. Oh. No, it'll be setting on a block. So it it will almost look like a portable building, but it, I mean, obviously it's going to be too big to move it. Will it have utilities? It will have electricity. And the only reason I'm asking that is because I don't want somebody to get into a situation where they didn't ask for enough variances if it's going to be too tall or you know right we already had that discussion. yeah okay. okay we get and, that a lot and as i walk through my neighborhood in the evenings i see all these buildings that are like two-story tall in the backyard and you know i'm wondering did they go and get variances and most likely they didn't they just built them but i wanted to do it the right way so your variance request now would be for the side setback for to be reduced from eight foot to six foot and the rear setback to be reduced from 20 feet to 10. Because there's a utility easement back there. Correct? If that's what I have to do, yes. Okay. Southwest corner or the southeast corner? Southeast corner. And I've spoke to all my neighbors, um, and they actually all signed a document that I may have provided to you uh, saying that they were okay with this. Any other questions or comments from the commission? This be a call for the vote. Call for the vote. Are y'all going to take both of them together? It, to the it, side and the rear. It's fine with me if it is with everyone else. Yes. Call for the vote for, for both variances. Okay. Parker? Yes. Parsley? Yes. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Variances pass 8-0. Next item, B19-26, Tony and Gina Knight, Benton County Parcel 21-00167-123. Variance for deviation of lot size in A1 from two acres to less than two acres presented by Tony and Gina Knight. Do you want me to start for you? <laughs> yeah. This is kind of a unique situation in that the highway department acquired right of way for the relocation of Zion Road over the 612 bypass, and this piece of property was split. Um, the property that's highlighted here is the section that you're asking for the variance on. They own that little piece on the other side of the access or Zion Road which is kind of strange in that the highway department owns a property to the east of it, and it's kind of a little island in there. Their hardship really was created by the way the road went through there, and they're asking for a variance to allow the lot to be less than two acres in an A1 zone. For a single family dwelling. Yeah. And it's septic sensitive. Are there city creating water? There's, there's gas and everything, but yeah. no, set, no sewer. Land. Creating a lot here, or is this this was created by the highway department? The highway department created the lot. What's it zoned? It's zoned, zoned A1. A1. Non conforming? Well, in order to be able to go ahead and build on it, it's not an appropriate size. So, to make sure it's clear and there's no, no uh, cloud on it, if she gets the variance for the size, then, then it, it's not a problem in the future. We, we're trying to clear things up as we go we've, we've been made an offer on it and of course they can't put a home there as the way it's the way it is right now <clears throat> how many acres is it a little more than an acre yes and then but they own the piece on the other side too but it's oh, today. Which is, today which is which is useless yeah unless you let me put a sign on it 
Which we'll talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I thought well, I'd throw that in there. Listen, yeah, we'll talk about that today. Okay, please no time. You can't put billboards up in Spring Hill Avenue Moratorium right now, so okay. Uh, let's still get into that. I, I had to throw that in. Uh, yeah. You, you get to say that since you sit through the whole thing. <laughs> Why not single family? They asked for a variance for the size rather than to rezone it to SF1. It doesn't have. Does it meet the, it could be our E if it's over an acre? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. It, could have, it could have been rezoned. They, they went this route to ask for. As it is, the, the east corner, we, we turned over to the city water, and they've put the central water system for all of those houses right there in that corner. Um, but we didn't know we couldn't build on it. That's yes, we didn't even realize we couldn't sell it until after I had put up my signs and we had someone interested in it and they wanted to put a mobile home on it. And I told them at that time they would need to come to the city to find out if that could be done. And then that's when we were told that actually we had to come to the city. It wasn't a, a, in order to get a conditional use for a mobile home on it, it wasn't a, a lot size that's acceptable. So you have to get a variance for the lot size. And then if it's rezoned to, to RE, they can't put a mobile home on it either. They're probably going to come back and ask for conditional use for it. We tried to do both of those at the same time, but we were told not to do that because it yeah, wouldn't transfer. Done it, uh, and do you have a septic system approval from the health department? Can you get a septic system on it? Do you know that? Um, yes, they were going to have a perk test done, but okay. then they, they held off until after we got our own okay. Yeah, if it can't be a lot size of that size, they weren't going to pay to have a perk test. We still don't know if it can go on there, whether the size is enough to allow a septic system to go on there yet or not. There is a septic system in the home that we used to own to the west of that that's probably 100 foot from that line, and it passed perk test. But you can't go across the property line with oh, a septic I know, system. Oh, I know. I'm just saying there is one right there. So. And ma'am? Whenever, um, before the highway went across our property, we had a mobile home and another septic system where that highway It was, was there and, and they dug it up. <laughs> they took that all out. It's kind of surprising that the highway department didn't take the entire track. We tried to get them to take that little piece in the middle <coughs> through our attorney, but they would not. They, they don't take trees either, but they, you'll they notice there's a tree They appraised it at a certain amount, and that's all that they would pay you for it, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Any questions or comments from the audience? Yes. I'm Catherine Holloway. I live at 12994 Night Lane. It's just to top right there. Um, the sea came in and blacktopped that curve off that road. Are they wanting to put a mobile home in there? I mean, is that what, that's what I need to It's completely yeah. surrounded by mobile homes. Uh, mine's not a mobile home. I mean, that's not the question today. But my, where's, how, where are they going to put, if city owns that top corner piece, I own, I've, there's a grandfathered in an easement from my property. That road goes through my property. So I own a little bit on each side, on the bottom side. Of Night Lane? Yes. Okay. And they don't have access to Night Lane off of that. That piece no. of property does not have access no. to Night Lane. Absolutely Excuse does. me? It absolutely does. <laughs> There's not any, any driveways or anything. Okay. Yeah. There may not be any driveways now, but the question is do they have access to it, a legal access point to it? I, I can't answer that because I haven't looked at all the titles to the deeds and all that. Yes, and our property goes all the way down the side of Night Lane. My service. Our, 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 my, our Night Lane, on this side, there's about two to three feet of our property. But it, is it their designated property. as an access easement across through there so those houses to the yes. west of you have access to They them? all have, yes, behind us. Okay. They're pre-existing Okay, uh, does the property house. to the south of it have access to that access easement as well? Uh, They're saying we yes, all I don't have know. An easement. Uh, yes. Because we owned the house at the very end 
Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, we're the ones that, that gave them these. Yeah, let, let yes, Aaron. we are the knights. We had the property <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, it's not not to get on this, but I mean, this is a that's a land document, like legal land document issue that that's <clears> not really with. There's a clear hardship here. I don't know how it got to this point. The state coming in, the two parcels getting split. It says in the guide for the state that they have to negotiate replatting at the time, but it's in the very bottom. It's very obscure. We see this a lot around Northwest Arkansas. It looks like a landlocked parcel. We don't know what the current easement situation is because we don't have a title to guarantee that or anything. So I, I would recommend we stay away from, if we could, those kind of discussions. And uh, if you have information to do with the variance that you have here, try to stay on that because no one in here knows. None of us are surveyors. None of us have the book and page of the stuff in front of us. So that's just my recommendation. Um, and we're only looking at can the size of the A1 yeah. lot be reduced to less than two acres? That's the only question now. The access easement portion will have to be dealt with right. when they want to do something else with it. I mean, there's a bigger question here is how we even got to this point with else. the land, but that's I don't know how to deal with that right now because that's because of the state and everything that came through there. So. Um, it is a concern because it sounds like it's a pending sale of that. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's going to property owner. Yeah, on right. it's going to come out in the title sale anyways when they yeah. convey the land because they're going to ask, well, how are you accessing it? Well, if they say it's prescriptive or anything of that nature, they're going to have to go prove that out on a civil matter. So that's, but that's not going to be There's of our been concern. A driveway into that property off a of night lane for thirty five. Yeah, years. right. But again, we're <laughs> yeah, we're not going to address that piece. We're not addressing it. that right. issue. We're addressing the issue of the size of the yeah. lot. Yeah, we just don't have this, the stuff for to do that um so any other questions no. to the commission call for the vote call for the vote by mrs haney arsley i'm gonna say yes eaters yes tyler yes covert yes david yes haney yes mueller yes parker yes bingo the variance to allow it to be less than two acres in an A1 zone has been granted. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Last item B19-27, Springdale Public Facilities Board, 1260 Kendrick Avenue, variance for deviation from the sign ordinance presented by Perry Webb or Scott Edmondson. <laughs> right there. Okay, this, yep. this is kind of unusual because we usually don't come to a planning commission with an either or. And so we're going to ask you right now, which one do you want? Do you want the five four by eights? You want six signs on this entire piece of property? Do you no, want the, five? The dilemma, the dilemma we're in, the Public Facilities Board doesn't know yet what they want to do. So we applied with two options. One of the options is not available, then I guess that just leaves us with one option to pursue. Okay, what you don't see on this drawing here is the new uh, 265 realignment actually split the piece of property. It's in our packet. Sorry, I just wanted to say what I discussed earlier. Um, legally, I don't like the commission to be in a position where you have to choose what the property owner is doing. I say let them choose what they're going to present first, and you can vote how you see fit on that, and if need be, you can vote on the second. Okay, so the first option is five four by eight signs, and that would allow you to put right. one on both sides of 265. A little bit of history on this. This property was all combined into one lot to meet another need to provide sewer to it. Correct. It was how many parcels before? It was three. Three parcels before. Okay. So five four by eight signs allows you to put them on both sides of 265 and both ends of the property and one on the 265 portion, the L265, correct? Well, That's how you got five. The picture up there doesn't show the new no. Highway 265. The one they have in their packet, packet. shows okay. that. Yeah. yeah. On the new highway, there are three road cutouts on, uh, above where that building is uh, located. It's still in Bethel Heights. There are three driveways cut out there. And our first option was to put a 128 square foot sign, eight by 16, on, I guess it would be between those two cutouts on the east side of the new road. 
as we got to looking at it, maybe we would be better off placing smaller signs along 265 because that is a long parcel there. And then also over on 260, the original the 265. That's where you got the, there. the five signs. So yeah, it's four, four here, one there would be the five signs. Right. The commission originally decided to do a 128 square foot sign, do one big sign. They have not met <laughs> since before we found out if we had to get a variance. <clears throat> they haven't met again. They meet next week, I guess. So you want to pick one that you want us to vote on first? You want us to first, re the first request to do five four by eight signs and the, and the planning commission can vote whether they grant that variance. Can I ask one question? In advance, why do you have two signs on the portion west on? There's just two driveways. The signs, what so we So you're what wanting we to put one, one to for put, every driveway. Do what now? You're wanting to put one at every driveway yeah, instead of just. We're just going to put a sign in the, the driveway is, is paved yeah. 25 feet and then it's just dirt and there's a gate there. We were going to put them right behind the gate. And then that puts one on the 264 side that puts one on actually three on or four on the new 265 one on the west side and three on the east side right. where the drives are basically is what that Kendrick that Avenue sense. Kendrick Avenue the, the right. one on the, far, the further south is south of Kendrick right. Avenue. right and the other the other two would be on the east side on that other piece of property where the drives are one on the other side of the new road and one on 265 well, I wish I could speak for the Public Facilities Board, but they're a city commission just like you are, so I can't speak for them either. Okay, so so mm -hmm. if we have a call for the question on the first request for five signs, then... I, yeah, I mean, I, I wish you would lower that to four signs because I don't know why you have to have one at every driveway. You have visibility, one sign would show that piece of property, but that's just... Okay, the request as presented is for five signs. Okay. Okay, you want us to vote on that one, or do you want us to vote on the one big sign first? I, I think the Public Facilities Board would say they'd like you to vote on both of them. So you actually, It gives them the option as to how they want to pursue it. Well, if one is approved <clears throat> and one is denied, then you know which way you're going to go. Because this becomes an either-or situation, and we're deciding what they want rather than the Yeah, design. I think Sarah was pretty clear. We need to have a decision from you on which one you want us to pick I to vote on. Did he say both? He wants, to, he wants us to vote on both of them. No, did he? I, I thought Perry said he wants it all. Oh, you don't want right. the big sign and the five signs, too? No. No. Oh, okay. No. Either-or. Either-or. So can we call for the question on five signs? Yes, you can call for the question on five signs. I'd like to do that. Okay. Call for a question by Mr. Peters. Five signs. Righty. Peters? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Covert? Yes. David? Yes. Haney? No. 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 Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Parsley? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay, so you have a variance to allow five signs. Okay. So if the commission decides not to do that, we have to come back and get another variance. Yes. Okay. I think we made their decision. Uh, I think we made uh, an opportunity as far as what they are focusing their attention on, on that one. So, yes, I mean, we'll, otherwise we'll they, they have to come back. To That's fine. Thank you. Okay, uh, planning director's report. Uh, work session May 21st at 5.30. Anybody have any problem with that? May 21st? We need to continue work on the master street plan. And with all this discussion about, well, some things that are going on, I think we need to start looking at our commercial zoning districts to see if there needs to be some alterations being made. I'll explain that a little bit more after we get some more information put together. We've talked about it before. Our C2 zone is pretty broad. We may want to look at making some changes in that and then also deal with our master street plan. Wayne has something. 
I sent you an email, Miss Patsy. Um, there's going to be a fire demonstration for Home Sprinkler Systems in Solemn Springs. I've asked Miss Patsy to send you around the flyer, if that's okay. okay. Um, basically, uh, the Northwest Arkansas Metro Fire Marshals aren't trying to get it to where it's required to be put in residentials. We're trying to show um, the misnomers of home sprinkler systems. Not all of them go off at the same time. There's a lot less water used. But what we really want to do is get a push at the state plumbing level to allow plumbers to install these and reduce the requirements of a backflow preventer due to the fact that these are lead-free systems and they use a loop system. So we want to explain that situation so it makes it more economic to put it in uh, as to allowing a, requiring a full-blown sprinkler system to install them. So it's going to be on May 23rd. I know that's a weekday and I know a lot of you can't make it, but these demonstrations, if you've never seen one and the heat that comes off of it and how the sprinkler system takes care of this, it's something to see. So she'll what send the and when you get into that flyer. situation, okay. when, when you have the requirement of two access roads or it being sprinklered, and the first thing we always hear is, oh, it's too expensive to put sprinkler systems it, it, in. That, that's true, Ms. Patsy. Yeah. But what um, we're also, it, is it will make it more economical if we can get the next code cycle passed. Instead of having a hydrant every 500 feet, you can have one every 650 feet. Instead of having uh, two access roads, you can have one access road. Um, you can also re reduce the water requirements from 100 or 1,000 GPM to 500. That means we can actually build further out in the county or towards our, our outskirts of our city if they have sprinkler systems in them. It, it, it's, it, they're really trying to make it more affordable to put them in by giving more breaks on some of the other things that's required. It's just automatically it's too expensive. That's the first thing we hear. Yes. And who votes those changes through? That goes through the state fire marshal's office, and then the city has to adopt what the city, what the, what the state has accepted or has adopted. The, as the state fire protection board was on board. Uh, basically, they was going to allow plumbers to get an extra accreditation to install these, and it would basically come off your cold water side, and it would go to either a toilet at the end, called the in run, or a loop method where it just it can't get stagnant, and. In my personal opinion, you have a better chance of getting a faucet from outside the United States that might have a little lead in it more than these heads because they're so highly uh, regulated. And, and this has been looked at at Phoenix, or, um, Scottsdale, Arizona, North Carolina. They tested the water. There's, there's, no, there's no danger as of yet. And there's two companies that um, Vega and Upanon, they both have designers that can design and just send a packet to the home or the builder to be installed. Um, to allow a plumber to install these things. If anybody's but, interested, that would yeah. be a cool thing to go see. Yes, we'll get one sent out to you tomorrow, the next day, so you'll Fine. know. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. I don't have anything else. If somebody has questions. Talk about signs more? No. <laughs> I don't like to talk about signs. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, meeting adjourned. Appreciate it. I just have one quick thing. So Saturday from 10 to 11 at Springdale Bulldog High School football field, there's an opportunity to be CPR trained for free. So anybody that you know or that you can make it, uh, we're partnering with Springdale Fire Department to put that on. So please attend if you can. Thanks, Ben. Y'all have a good rest of the week.